good. Okay, good evening. We'll call to order this uh, special meeting of the Acton School Committee, Tuesday, May 26, 2015. And uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> it's amazing they have changed all that. <laughs> okay, what do we have for adjustments to the agenda? Uh, a couple of things. We might as well, if we can get some business done that we can. Under unfinished put 3.2 web. Under unfinished web board agenda. 3.2 web board, okay. And then under. Uh, 4.7, just put dash June 9th. That's just a reminder to talk, make sure we talk about that. Now we need to add another executive session, 5.1, for the same personnel matters. Different, different person. Uh, okay, so 5.5 5 is executive five session, and, 5 .1. and then 5.1 is executive session number two. Yep. I don't know where she is. I don't know where your packets are. That would be handy. So we may have to bounce. Yeah, we don't have. There weren't minutes in that package that she sent us, were there? No, I didn't see minutes. There were no minutes in there, right? Okay. Okay. No, I just, no, I so we'll have to move that to the next. One. We'll move the uh, we'll move the approval of the minutes of the May twelfth meeting 9th. to June 9th. Somebody want to make that a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Unfinished business. Policy second reads. Second read policies. And Kim's got those policy bundles too, right? I hope so. So let's skip 3-1 for now and let's move on to 3-2. Mike, would you mind bringing up the web page and show uh, last time there was some concern about accessing um, agendas and minutes? And last week you and I, you said, well, Kim, you came up with a better solution. Could you show people? <coughs> Off the school website, um, there were a couple locations where the minutes have been stored. Um, the old system and the new system um, <clears throat> so today we just centralize everything school board if you go under the school website under departments as a school board and then there's a folder to minutes and a link to the video so under the minutes <clears throat> the new structure of our minutes are based on um, the whole book the whole bundle of, of documents that you receive um, all the admin reports, um, the minutes themselves. Um, so now each one of them is under a folder, and the old stuff is in the archive. So basically, okay. each year you only have the current school year, and everything else will be archived in that folder. Oh. So can you just click on one and? I can't see from there. Ed, this one. Oh, whoops. Oh, there you this go. was the last one. Then you have everybody's reports. Um, okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Very good. Superintendent's report. Um, the agenda. And the right. minutes from the, minutes the un unapproved minutes of the. Uh, right. Is that the unapproved or is that the approved minutes? Unapproved. That, was the unapproved for, for, that would have uh, been today. For, uh, that we'd be reading. Okay. Okay. No, it looks like 414 minutes. So it's a little less, there's, like I said, there were three different places things clicked. Should have said 414. Yeah, 414. That was the. That, that was our last that was our last meeting, so those would have been the ones that we would have approved at that right, meeting. Right, those, those are the ones that you would have approved on the main meeting. Yeah. But everything is in one location. Very nice. Looks, 
Pretty Very clean. Nice. 521. Neat and ready to go. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to uh, new business. Oh, yeah. Uh, four one is the opt out update from Augusta. Does is anyone been keeping up on what's going on? <laughs> kind of. Well, kind of trying to. Um, <laughs> with the stuff from from uh, main school management, things uh, I've been putting out. Yes. Uh, for the for everybody to know, that looks like the main commissioner, the education committee of, of the subcommittee of the legislature. Anyway, long story short, looks like Maine will not be using the SBAC next year, the test that they use this year. After all those hoops we jumped through, they're not going to use it, they're going to use, the, 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 I guess you would describe it this way, they said we're going to switch to a, a, a reliable, proven vendor that's had a track record with, a track record with Maine. What that means, there's all kinds of speculation out there. One is Nuia, another one is um, form a kneecap, which is smart about uh, measured progress. Measure progress. Who knows what it's going to be? But you can be pretty sure it's going to be some form of online or something like that because it's the only cheap way to deliver some types of assessments. The main point was this. <coughs> it seems to be anyway. It was too long. You need to be sure. So that's where it's at. The test itself was too long for the kids, you mean? Yes, it's yeah. seven something hours. Seven minimum hours. seven hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the questions are also well. They're very stiff. Glitchy. They're also glitchy. And, and Meaning they're they, ha they had a high rigor. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the other thing is, um, <coughs> you guys had known that we've been we've been sending you some uh, data on how many kids were had opted out. The number increased, and we were below the ninety-five percent required. Rate. NCLB, but who knows where that's going to go? There's going to be some. I we just don't know yet. We don't know where that's going to go. Kevin, Kevin mentioned it the other day. I don't know if it was in the strategic plan here <coughs> regarding that. Somebody's going to have to take a position on that. Yeah, and they'll have to make adjustments because right. whatever boat we're in, there's, everybody's in the same boat across the <coughs> state. <coughs> but there's a, I think there's a chance to. I, I've read some things where the federal government may slam states, and that might trickle down to us as well. Because um, the states kind of, it's been, a, it's been a battle between the states versus the federal um, initiatives, and um, the only recourse the federal government has is to withhold funding. So they do nothing or they withhold funds, and if they withhold funds to the state, you can bet that we're not, we'll, we'll, we'll hit it somewhere. So that was my concern last time when we spoke. Mm -hmm. By not meeting it, they could put, it puts it in jeopardy. And there's some dis discussion I uh, know it was said here, or, and I've also seen <coughs> another place writing that maybe school boards need to come up with their own local policy that meets the requirement. Yeah. But I know you guys have expressed interest that it should still be up to the parent choice. So I don't know where that's going to go. Really but it's not done. Yeah. And, you know. We should before next year. I mean, I don't know when we should count, put it on the calendar, but um, to, because there's a good chance that whatever is decided next year might have a similar. Uh, public reaction. So again, I think we'd be in good stead to figure out what our policy will be in advance. I mean, I believe there's ways to still support parent choice still being in compliance. So, but I think we should put that on the calendar at some point to, to, to correct draft policy for that maybe in the fall or something. I got it, Mark. Thanks. Okay. The next one is Okay, nominations for 1516. Um, this won't be a nomination, but I just want to mention that under the pre K, we have had somebody accept the position. Her name is Shannon Johansson. She currently runs a, like the pre K program at uh, an area underneath UNH. Do you know what the actual name of it is called, Trish? It's the Children's Center. It's their actual right. training daycare facility. It's a year round program for not only does it does it provide the daycare, but also provides a place for the student teachers. So she's somebody who actually student taught there before becoming up through the ranks all the way to a lead teacher. So she's the one that has accepted the position. We haven't issued contract yet, but she's basically, Kim could speak to her more, but she's in, in the Okay, and the other one, though, uh, we need um, 
approval of probationary teacher, uh, probationary one, which means from one year to probationary two year, second year, and it'll be Ryan Martin. <coughs> and I'm just going to lump these. So that's one. And we need a probationary two year teacher to a three year teacher, which would be Travis Cochran. So we need a motion on that. And that's it? That's, that's it. Well, then I'll have another one, but okay. a different, different situation. So what's the motion? We move to accept? Move to accept that they no, the nomination. Two three. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Both of them? Two and two, three? One, one goes Ryan to two. Ryan is one, one to two, two, and Travis is two to three. No, it's just that I've heard great things about them, and I've seen, I know I've seen Travis in action, so I feel confident in nominating them. Ditto. Any further conversation? Comments? If none, all those in favor? Okay, the next one, unfortunately, is she was going to be in the nomination from two to three years. However, today she put in her resignation to Kim. Um, Melinda Vandehauer is going to go to South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. North Carolina. North Carolina. Um, she said she's had it with the snow, I guess would be the t one of the terms. Um, but personal reasons, too, uh, she's decided to move on. So uh, I have not written a response to her yet because it just came in. And I would look for a motion to accept Melinda's resignation with much regret and appreciation for what she's done in the two years she's been here. After. So moved. Seconded with regret. Any further discussion? Just really sad to see her go. She's done a lot of great things for acting. She has. <coughs> Which brings up a another question I didn't plan to. I assume you would like to fill that position. Yeah, let's vote on this first. Oh, I thought you All those in favor? Okay. I'm a yes. So okay. we just need to know because we'll start and put the ad in tomorrow. It's all yes? Yes. Okay. To, uh, to start advertising. to 4.3 update on pre-k um, I mentioned the already position, the position and the application we have not have a formal signature from the state however today the final memorandum of understanding from child development services did get sent to the DOE which is the last piece of signatures and bounced back and forth and that went up to Cindy Brown who's the actual person that signed that and uh, then we have all the components as far as the DOE is concerned I don't think we have any other no, outstanding details that I'm aware of. It's just a matter of now of moving forward. There may be something that comes up, but that's that. And then the next thing, uh, I'll let you want me to say a little bit, or would you like to start where we're going now? Oh, I don't mind explaining. I, I would like to say that this has gone as fast as we could make it happen with regards to the players to get it approved and so forth. We had to get all that in place before we could start the even considering registration and Chris will talk about the plan we're going to try to pull off this week. Well, as I've explained to parents, we've had all the ducks in the ponds, just getting them in row that, you know, just takes time. Um, so we hope um, by Thursday to have a packet of information for parents so that we can outline. Um, we have slots for 16 full-time, five-day-a-week preschoolers. The parents will be responsible for transportation. And so with that, we need to know who are available. And having talked with other districts as well as the state, we've come to um, the conclusion that we do have to have um, low income as part of the formula for the initial slots being filled. If we have more than the 16 interested, um, then we have to go to a lottery type situation so that we can be fair. Um, 
Income based, yes. No, no lottery and income based. Okay. So um, the challenge is we had over 20 something students, possibly in families of students, possibly interested, but they weren't all interested in the exact same thing. So we have to kind of sort through that. We also have to have a timeline of when they'll be screened. Um, so we're trying to put all of that information into one packet so parents will have a transparent um, process in front of them uh, of the uh, forms to fill out and get back to us. There needs to be a deadline with that so we can process all of the numbers through. We're also, um, we have put it out to the ed techs in the school. If anybody <coughs> has a desire that they would like to move to the preschool program, um, they'll have about a week to give me that information. If we just get one, you know, great, somebody's interested. If we get more than that, we would have to have some sort of interview process for that as well. So it's a lot of little things all kind of adding up fast. And you, and you expect this packet will be ready to go to the parents by Thursday? The, um, in com talking with other districts and also do we, do we, they suggested that we contact Portland because they have a pretty good process for this, using the income and then this ELA, uh, ELS, English as Secondary Language, ESL um, process. So I got a hold of Marie, who's their person. Uh, yesterday I got an key today, and uh, I have Ryan Peace changing it over to our letterhead and match and so forth. So that should, that should be done tomorrow. So we'll follow the steps. The good news is, well, good and bad, I guess. Next year, when you do the normal K pre-screening, it will be pre-K, but it will but um, this year will it will also be those kids that aren't in the pre-K program this year will have to still be screened as K. Okay, so it'll be, but it, I think it could probably be done concurrently or pretty, pretty close. That'll yeah, work. so it's a lot, of, it's the same. Generally, be, you know, mm -hmm. pushed out in February or March and start pushing that information out. We're just trying to play catch up now. Right, you'll just be looking for age appropriate levels. Um, we've got some parents who are calling, you know, they're concerned. One of the challenges parents are facing is that their daycares or preschools that are private <coughs> are giving them deadlines for saving their spots. Yeah. And we certainly empathize That's with that. We just right. couldn't go any Russian. faster than, right. <laughs> than we've gone. So, you know, it, it, some parents are just concerned, well, when will they know, and, you know, they're, we're, we're trying to get the answers as fast as we can. Okay. Anything else? Anything else up on the under the pre-K? Let's move on into four four update on assistant special education director. They mentioned the other time we didn't. We, didn't, we they we've hired a person. Or I say we Massapisa. Can I, person's name is Nicole Poole. I mentioned. Um, I had communication with her today. She will be coming to the June ninth board meeting. Uh, she may come before that on that day to meet staff if possible. We have school for her quick hi how are you doing kind of thing it's up in the old moment because she's still finishing up they're closing the school that she's in the school I mentioned so she's but she said she would definitely be here for the night that's it and she's she has been hired already correct she she paperwork with Massapisa they're gonna be there they're gonna be we just pay a fee to them okay okay then let's move on to 4.5 which is an update on grants the fruits and vegetable grant we applied for, we did not get. Which would have been nice. That's you know, I told you we might be able to get. Okay. We are not in Title One summer. Title One, um, I've talked to uh, Janet Gaw about today, and we definitely have it. It's just the computer. There's a glitch in there, but she told me give me a week and we'll get it fixed. So today, uh, a lot of time was spent on not only the Title I, but the Special Ed Extended School Year programs. Um, we, we have all our teachers now, and we know which ed techs want to be part of that, so we did the paperwork for that. And um, our next thing is just narrowing down the kids and, or the students and working on transportation, finding out where all everybody lives, and then coordinating for the transportation for the summer. So, so the <coughs> extended year is definitely a goal then? Yes. Fine. Yeah, both of them are. Both. Yes, yeah. Mr. Putnam. But the summer literacy grant um, is for what age children or what grade? They're, they're basically the kindergarten, kindergarten going into first grade. Yeah, to, to help them, you know, with literacy that they might not, might need a little bit of a boost. But they'll, 
it coincides with the same time span that special ed yeah. does, so mm -hmm. those four, four weeks. So th that's the same program that uh, Lisa and, and uh, Sylvia yeah, so did it, last year. Right. And yeah. they're going to do that again this year? Sylvia is going to be the teacher this year, and Jennifer will be her ed tech for this year. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, the, before we go on, uh, yeah. Kim, we need to have a policy bundle. And the policy second reading comes you need to on the agenda three point one, but the policy bundle they don't want to have hard copies. Uh, was it just IK and JBA was they just sent? Just the, was was just two. Two. <coughs> Those were the new ones. Those are the <coughs> new ones. There was right. a second read. Um, <coughs> if we can wait till or we can pull up the regular minutes from unapproved minutes, which we have it listed. Okay. Um, you hear that, Mike? Yeah. Um, I can print them out over here. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, go ahead and we'll go on to those, those two policies. You want to take a look at the uh, two new ones that... Uh, oh, excuse me. We skipped board discussion. Yeah. Communication. Do you want to come back to that? Here's the policy. Well, uh, yeah, I was going to finish this page and then go back to that. This yeah. one or this one? Well, this one here we haven't done yet. Right. Yeah. Communications, board discussion. Yep. Last time you wanted to have a conversation, you said this time of uh, the next board meeting regarding just overall communications, et cetera. And so I put it on the agenda there. Um, I will say that I met with the staff last Thursday, was it? Or Wednesday? Thir Thursday. About, about parts of the strategic plan, and particularly the part that we're going to talk about tonight. When Mike gets on, but I'm, I'm having a communication survey that's going up for me. That's going to have four parts. It's going to have uh, superintendent part, principal part, instructional coach, and also school committee for, for uh, input from the staff on types of communication, Likert scale, et cetera, some stuff. What kind, what kind of data are you lo looking to solicit? Well, I was part of it. I've gotten already, but I want to know what your thought, because this is the item you guys wanted on the next agenda. Oh, gotcha. was board discussion on communication yeah well I think overall we just wanted to just touch base about how information was being disseminated and just making sure that everybody is being heard on things we just wanted a little update that's the way I understood it anyway I'm not sure somebody else had a different feeling mm -hmm. I took it a little different I thought you wanted to have it well, that's fine if you want to do surveys. That's good. No, I thought you wanted to have a dialogue. Yeah, no, I think I think that was my request in regards to um, the, the last meeting, the, the concerns brought up in regards to the strategic plan, the communication, and the collaboration of the strategic plan. So I, admit, I confused the dates. I was thinking that we were, before we were meeting today, we would have another strategic plan meeting because I think that's part of the strategic plan meeting. And we can have the conversation now, too, is in regards to the strategic plan. Um, having a conversation in regards to how do we get more collaboration so in addition to the typical posting it um, as we've always done um, do we need to do anything else in regards to soliciting more information and getting some uh, communication back <coughs> I think we'll talk about this too um, in regards to the one of the policies IK um, we mentioned last time, I think, in regards to posting the draft strategic plan on the website to get f public feedback. So I think that's one step in that direction. But I think we, as we continue to the strategic plan, because it's never done, um, the more input we can have to that, I think, the better. So maybe some of the questions for the survey, Bob, might be in regards to ideas about maybe a section just on the strategic plan. Yeah. Yeah, if that makes sense. Um, um, ideas in regards to participation and the intent was to put the draft link out there this week yeah of the strategic plan I hope you understand as you said it's a it's, it's a, a dra it's a working document so I was wondering and that that's the only thing I'm worried about on the public side is people looking at it and thinking that's it's it's gonna stone because it never is no it's gonna be there forever now and changing so all the time well, <coughs> my, my big question is, is we're going to put this draft link out there, but if people have feedback, how are they going to respond back to it? Are you going to specify, yeah. like, feedback okay. goes to you or feedback? No, we'll have a way to do it. Oh, so okay. 
And I think it's good that the feedback is I can get on and give my feedback, but not that people can see everybody else. It's not a discussion it's forum like per a se, like saying. topics. Um, <coughs> don't say that no. word because you don't say that word. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I think there should be, if you know, people take time to look at them, if they have some ideas, I think it, it, it would be great to, you know, to have that input. But um, I, again, as I think with the next strategic plan meeting, I think we definitely have a, I think we've gotten more done this year with the strategic plan than we've had in the pre years previous. So as we continue to move forward, I think the more voices we can have um, and the more communication, the better. So. <coughs> and, um, you know, it, it's possible that people didn't really understand when we were having a workshop on the strategic plan, they were actually in development of it, so it might be a good idea for uh, an email to go out to the staff whenever we're having a strategic plan workshop so that it's, even though it's posted, so that staff would understand that we would like to have them come and that we would like to have their input. So maybe an email could go out to the staff when we're having those workshops. What are your thoughts on that? That's fine. That's fine. Makes sense to me. Mm. Which brings up the question is when do you want to have another one? The strategic plan meeting. Should we book one now? It's up to you. We're all here. Do you need anything from Kim in terms of policy right now? Copies of anything? The policy bundles were all the they There's two. he had them up there. Okay. Um, there, all the uh, first half of the IT things that we did last yeah. week. And back on the communication, you know, I did send a letter up to all staff and I included you in a copy of that. Have you seen that? Well, is that is that the one where you were talking letter about? May. Said letter May. About the SLO stuff. Yep. Yeah. Okay. M A M A Y. Probably continues things like that. Okay, um, everybody's going to be available for the June 9th meeting. June 9th? Kevin. June 9th meeting. Kevin? <laughs> yes. I'm in country. You're in the country? <laughs> so, do we want to plan to meet early as we have in the past before that meeting and have a strategic plan workshop that day? Yeah. That works for me. So June 9th. I want to say four to six. Four to six. Does that work? Yep. Does that work for you? Yep. And you've done an overview of the strategic plan at the at some of these meetings, but we haven't done like an in-depth sort of at a school board meeting yet, Bob, have we? Nope. I'm wondering if we should. We've only, in the workshops, we only got up through yeah. the first section three. I'm wondering, when do you think? We've got to see where we get to, but at one point, do you think it might be good to sort of... I'm not sure how you can do a whole review of that whole thing at, at, at one of these meetings. But I mean, well, even like a piece, like even if we just take one of the seven. Yep. Well, it is really what we're focusing on. On the, the first, first one. one. Yeah. Everything is really geared toward the first one. So it might be good, like, maybe at the next board meeting to kind of do an overview of at least. We can because we're this, – this board meeting is really to replace the July one. Yeah. And so it kind of – and having it now, we just got rid of some business that we don't need to do in June 9th. <coughs> but we also going to – we talked about – when we go back to uh, the policy bill, we're going to talk about June 9th and the PBL policy that you're going to discuss. I think they'll dovetail. Okay, that's they don't know what we're talking about here, so yeah, we need to talk about this as a group. So, June 9th, 4 p.m. Yeah, so I guess you'd be on to your policies. Okay, uh, <coughs> policy bundle to review. This is the, the list up here. This would be we're back on just so people know, we're back on the second read. On the second read, we're back on page 3.1. Diana's got a question. Yes. I wanted to, I had a question on the policy ECAD 2-R, which is school security surveillance system slash rules. Mm -hmm. 
I asked Mike about it earlier, but I just wanted to bring it up for everybody. Down in section C, the last one, it says video recordings will be stored for a minimum of 30 days and up to a full school year. Um, I just was wondering if that needed a little bit more description about like how they were going to be stored and kind of who's responsible for that or do we need to say that in <coughs> policy? It was just a little confusing for me when I looked at it. And Mike could speak to how they're currently being stored. <laughs> Actually, you're right. The wording on that might need to be revised. Um, to state something more of the line, the video recordings will be stored for, no, maybe not, or up to a full school year, maybe. Um, or up to. But the video storage is all computer, it's all on hard drives. <coughs> um, at this point, we are storing approximately 50 days. Um, if we move forward with all the video camera upgrades that we intend to do, um, that number is going to go down unless I s stick another hard drive into the system. So um, our, our capacity is only limited to the amount of stores you want to supply the unit. Just, just from someone that had these in, in another district, um, we had a 30 to 60 day window. Because anytime you have an issue, generally it comes up before 30 days, and what you do is you go get it, and then you offload that piece of the question base, and you store that <laughs> in another place. So this is just your running day-to-day. -day. These, these cameras are all set up motion, so it has to, has to be motion before there's any recording. So that actually saves a lot of space, too. But um, the, the procedure should be that if there's an incident, that piece of the incident is copied, put in another place, and you can keep it for you know, the authorities or whatever it is you need. I don't know. I just felt like uh, as I was reading that, it just didn't seem clear, and I didn't know if we could have some conversations about how to make it a little clear. Because it, if it's not clear to me, that other people may feel the same way. So, anybody else? Do you want to say something different? No, I just was confused about like, <laughs> how it happens. At, like <coughs> so what the process only? is, and then it says it's stored for a minimum of thirty days and up to a full school year. So you're gonna have a full school year worth of videos, I guess. All right. You or could. Or, or, or. Right. So well, it's giving it's 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 giving you the limits. It's at least thirty days, but no more than a full year, and anywhere in between, we might store it. Well, I think you actually need to store <coughs> it now, based on if you have an incident, you want to keep that longer. Yeah. <coughs> So it might be, as a general rule, you're going to keep this for up to a full year and then see any particular incident will be archived off separately from the general storage. I would be okay if we added a C, but if people knew that this was being archived somewhere because I think that's important information. So as this video, this would be as a general video archive, recordings will be 30 days up to or you know, <clears throat> this is not uh, so do we want to do we want to just maybe I didn't know if it followed like a certain format it had to be a certain way or not but it just I don't know nope it's really it just really it's stuck it's stuck enough. out that to me so. so so maybe we could change the wording if we wanted to the very uh, general video recordings at the beginning which is like every day blah 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 you stuff. Got it, Kim? Mm -hmm. yeah. so put this general BC general videos We'll bring the that coins back. will be stored for a minimum of 30 days <coughs> or take out the and to put in an or up to a full school year. I don't year. know about the full school year. What if the incident took place in June and you need to look at it now in October? Which full school year? That's why the C will come into I place. You put in the uh, option C. C. Um, the incident you keep. Okay, put in the, yeah. Yeah. So C is. So you're going to add. Add an uh, add uh, a section C, <coughs> which will say that special in any particular any incident, particular incident can be will be archived separately. Want to do it right now? Well, we're she, she's she's the keeper of the prison mm -hmm. document. Oh, system. I got you. Okay. okay. I yeah. just have a question. Yeah. Who would determine whether or not it's kept thirty days or two hundred and seventy days? Well, if you archive it, it can, it's, it can be, it's permanent. It can be permanent. This one here, I, I think it yes. needs to be destroyed after a certain period of time. But like intended. Option B is based on the actual storage capacity of the unit. I mean, you know, um, so if I s put a bigger hard drive into the system, <coughs> the 
the oldest video could potentially be 365 days old or 1,000 days old. So it's like your inbox and your mail. It's like it tells you that it will go to trash after 30 days automatically if you haven't done anything else to it. But once the storage is reached, once it hits, it's going to start to touch over. Over. If it hasn't been touched for any other reason. And it will maintain. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's really what Mr. Williams question really is. Right? It's option, right. Step C or, or um, bullet C will have to, will be worded in a way where we will retain that video footage until till issue is resolved and indefinitely until issue is resolved and i think uh, yeah i think too looking at b it actually should become this is get so policy wonkish um b is not about viewing it's about storage now so i'd make it a d, <coughs> maybe i'm missing this but make it a d um retention of videos and then I think I don't know if will if this way you get at who determines I think something similar to the superintendent building administrators or other designees of the superintendent will determine um, how long footage will be no I think we yeah. should set a policy I yeah. think it should be specified well, I mean yeah so I would make right that here. its own separate section at Person. D not just to C but move it then to another category because retention. retention or uh, storage of next page that's in it okay. makes sense you get me no yeah Okay, so let me just, let me just go over B again real quick. Okay, first of all, B, I'm adding the word general in front of video recordings. And the and will now be an or. And then C. I don't think the and should be an or. No. That that that's and. grammatically, I think, that's, that's saying that's what I thought this is the that. smallest and this is the max. This is a range. And the window in between. Yeah, yep. but I would put a full year. I don't think i put school year yep. because of that. I mean, it is definitely, it, it's... Good point. Grammar's little, I mean, it's a little school. awkward, but... Take out school. Up to a full year. Can I modify it now? Or full calendar year? Yeah. No, I'll, I'll full year, because it it'll be whatever the date yeah. is. It's recorded today, it'll be a year from now, if space allows. Okay. And then C, I'm saying any particular incidents will be archived separate from the general video recordings until issue is resolved. Okay. And then and as far D. as retention... What's D going to be? So, no retention is a separate. Well, a D D over to the left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you just read for C? I think that she does cover C. Okay, yeah. C. Mm -hmm. I wrote any particular incident will be archived separate from the general video recordings until the issue is resolved. Then destroy. Okay. And then uh, on E H B. That, that one talks about state laws and federal laws and whatnot, what you're supposed to be doing with them anyway. Oh, good. There's a retention policy. Well, that's just school records? That's just school records. School records. Oh, school re oh, business. Oh, I'm sorry. It's like, like, yeah. That's different. So, Brian, can you go back to the other one for a second? So, I think oh, you keep C, right, right. Um, but I think maybe in front of B and C you put at the um, discretion of the superintendent and his or or his or her designee, video recordings will be stored, and then you just continue. But I think if you put the clause on who makes the decision, because um, I think it's uh, unclear who decides. Under C, are you talking about? Under, under B and C. B and C. Okay. Okay. So in front of both of them, I will say. At the discretion of the superintendent and or his or her designee, and then either yep. B, in general video recordings, and then C, any particular instance. Yep. And then, so I will, because this is a second read, I'll pull this one out for a second read. Goes back to the next meeting. meeting. I'll go right back to one. Does it go back to the first read? No, we're no. going to. No. Oh, okay, good. It'll be back. It'll be nice. back as a second read. Correct. As yep. adjusted on the ne at the June right. meeting. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. So then this one will, this will, this one and the two new ones will be going back. Awesome. Okay. Well, you people just saw was what was on the policy meeting. Some the last policy meeting, we were there for like two hours and a half, <coughs> and we got two policies. Done. I've lost count of how many meetings we've had. It's a fun time. committee to be on. We've had more than I think we've you've had, had in the prior five years, to be honest with you.
Ten. And we're clicking away slowly. You know, yeah, just chip away, chip away, chip away. Good catch. Okay. Nice so let's go back to so the. Can we go back, back to the bundle? Mm -hmm. Just to make sense. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Can we go back oh, to the turkey. bundle? Yeah. Okay. So this is. Does anybody have any other questions on these that we bundled <laughs> last time for our first <laughs> reading? Uh, the other question. Do we need more time too? It's a big bundle. You. This is your second reading. I know, but you may. I want to make sure everybody's had time to do the second read. <laughs> no, the second want, read, if we if if adopt, want, we, we could do a second bundle them. of these readings. readings. All right, we okay. want to do this the Let's see, yeah, why don't we make a motion? Why don't we? Uh, I'll ask for a motion to uh, do a, a second read of this whole bundle with the amendments that we just did at the June meeting. Okay. Give you more time to actually. Look over because that's that's a lot of stuff. There's that a, we and went there's a lot, of, there's a lot of stuff in there, and some that's new. So, somebody want to make that motion? So moved. Second. <coughs> it's been moved and I seconded. I take the shortcut. It's been moved and seconded that we um, table the acceptance of the bundle for um, second read policy, second reads until June 9th. <coughs> Any more discussion? All those in favor? So moved. Okay. Four point seven. Okay. Now we're looking at the new policies that we just got for our first read, <coughs> which is IK proficiency-based learning system. And JBA, which is public preschool toileting policy. Can I suggest you do JBA first? <laughs> sure. Good call. Just an FYI, the original sample of this came from the DOE and Portland and a couple out of state school districts that had a combination or whatever, and then it got tweaked. <coughs> uh, we have a utility sink designated for cleaning and sanitizing the potties. This is um Andy. Can I answer? Yeah. Oh. And Carol's here. She could speak to Sam. I know it's me. You have the utility sink that would clean the potties versus the sink that cleans the hands. There are currently two sinks in that area. Utility sinks? Not utility sinks, regular sinks. <coughs> Closest utility sink is right there be down by Sylvia's room. Yeah. It's in that vicinity. Right. Oh, it's a custodian closet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. Okay. Then we talked about need a procedure. Well, yeah. Did that's we ever what finish I, that? No, uh, I don't see a JBA-R. Okay. Well, I will look for uh, uh, acceptance of public preschool toileting policy JBA to be accepted tonight for a first read. Can, can I make a yes. suggestion? Yeah. And it was brought up by Carol. Um, the section under uh, school departments should work in the following ways to address the toileting issues, which is kind of like your procedure, but under 2E, require the parent slash legal guardian to supply clean clothes, pull up pants and, and or diapers and wipes. So that way, um, oh. Wipes. They have sanitary wipes instead of using paper towels. So you want to use an add and wipes. And Where is wipes. this? C Carol e. made some suggestions after she read it. 2E. Yeah. 2E? Yeah. Want to e. yeah. well, we'll just e. put it in right now? Yep. Yeah. And wipes. Just add that. No, she said no. No? I'll do it. <coughs> okay. It's all yours. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. When we're working as a group, we'll do that. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. It should be all good. So do yeah, you want to not... Do the first read on that, end or no, do, or just a first just read with that amendment. With that, with that amendment, okay, yeah. that change. So, and then I'll look for a motion to accept JBA for a first read with uh, the amendment under 2E. Add the words and wipes. So moved. Seconded. Okay. Any further discussion into this policy? I have a question. Again. Well, the person who's dealing with. Uh, soiled pants, etc. Will they be offered gloves to wear? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. And those gloves will be 
like hospital that are not necessarily latex gloves to prevent anybody having a latex allergy? I don't, know what, we, we I don't know what we have for has we have we have gloves now for hazardous cleanup for we have both. We have both. They're both available? Yes. Okay. Yeah. This actually has to be in place before we get approved this pre-K program. That's why this is is that specified in the policy? That's specified. The type of glove? Yeah. Or, or, or even gloves. I don't remember never seeing gloves in here. I think the recent epidemiology and things like norovirus do say that, uh, and children who may have been hospitalized and come back with diarrhea from antibiotics, that gloves do make a difference with those people handling either vomitus or stool. So I would certainly put it in there in some place that it's expected the gloves be worn by the personnel. C. diff and some of those things. Yes. Yeah. Um, Did we capture that? So let's go back to uh, let's go back to number two, Kim. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, but that would be in the R, I think. When you do the, yeah, you could do that. But well, that we've, we've a part of the procedure. Yeah, gloves. It could be up in under the very top section. Yes. Under two, um, right. <coughs> two A or B or C or D. Yeah, or I was gonna say somewhere two, in there, maybe two two A and two then move B, the others down. Probably two B would be. Or under policy, you may want to just say C procedure such and such. Yeah. And right. then have it an, an attached procedure that may change from time to time. Yeah. Well, JBA-R is where the procedure is supposed to be spelled out. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And we didn't have that part And yeah. that doesn't go to a board okay. anyway. Okay. <coughs> so it needs to be... So that, that, would be a, that would be part of the procedure. <coughs> Two A says, staff, volunteers, and children shall wash hands with soap and running water after assisting with toileting and or diapering. Yeah, right. Do we so want something staff or, you know, volunteers will wear gloves while engage in the act of is that what you're talking about yes yes i, I think we that want one there makes total sense so the to me. that after the gloves it does not preclude your washing your hands after correct <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. after i want both of them in there <laughs> how many nurses just take them off and keep going okay the doctors too okay. how would you know be last <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to fix that kim somehow yeah. before yeah. the next <laughs> and we'll work on a procedure as well so okay. We have to anyway, but we just time procedure. Okay, so we have a, a motion that's mm -hmm. been made and seconded. Yes, to accept this policy with the revision of adding and <coughs> wipes, and the, you want to put uh, Kevin to that in up in the first section that we'll also be adding the use of gloves. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on this policy? Well, if not, all those in, in favor of first read as it amended? Okay. Okay, now we'll move on to IK, policy <coughs> IK, which is a po policy on proficiency based learning system. Uh, this, this actually is going to need more than a minute. Oh, yeah, more than one meeting. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> what the thought was in the policy committee meeting as we, when we chatted, Jeanette, can pipe in. I think we said that we hope to maybe we can have this be read, get up to the, the staff, get it's up done. to everybody, and then on the 9th we do some type of workshop. Regular board meeting, but it will be abbreviated. We'll do this. That's why we're nailing away some of this stuff in the beer. Great. Our reports will be brief unless you have some questions <coughs> related to that. And then we focus purely on this policy and some type of work session with whoever, the public, and Kevin is offered to facilitate that process. We were talking about it, but I don't know if that's the direction you want to go or. So has this gone to the staff yet? Because it's. No, it's this just. This is the first to see it. Okay. It's really your business yep. to set policy and then go from there. We could show the policy right now, up here. Mm -hmm. I would, I would feel comfortable with and sharing. I think if we do that, I think we ought to set a time limit. For, you know, if we only get so far, maybe, maybe skim the whole thing and then come back. I don't know. 
What's your pleasure? <laughs> Do you want to just kind of zip through it right now um, to show the outline of the policy so that people can see what the outline of it is? Just to give an overview? And yeah. give an overview and yep. then, um, then come back to and then, and then come back. Because really, many little pieces, like even like this little piece, that's a, that's a big topic. Yeah, and a, a little background too in regards <coughs> to, um, I think this policy in particular, um, because it's a, you know an almost an all it's an all encompassing in the sense of what our what's our stance or vision our sort of um, the principles upon which the proficiency based learning we want um, to really undergird uh, teaching and learning in, at Acton. So it, it influences a lot of practices and procedures throughout the school. So I think that it might propel a variety of shifts. So I think it'll be really important um, once the school committee sort of feels comfortable with at least um, you know the first read of this then really being having an open discussion and dialogue with staff in regards to um, what it means mm -hmm. uh, sometimes with pol in the policy this I think will uh, reinforce a variety of things that's been happening here I think it will also push practice in a lot of areas and um, and I think that will require you know, a lot of support, a lot of dialogue <coughs> and discussion. So, Mike, can you bring up that policy? I don't know I'm where sending it, it to you. <coughs> hmm? I'm sending it. She's sharing it with you. So, Kevin, can you tell us? You know, say from back in the day, I went to school. Yeah. <coughs> What's the difference between this and when I went to school? We should go item by item. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if we were a K-12 school, we're required to have a proficiency-based policy, okay? But, so Sanford has to come up with one. And everybody has to have one by the end of June, or June 30th, across yeah. the state. But no, but you're saying if they don't meet <coughs> criteria, they can't move on from grade three to four. No, or not not like even that? grade. The, the, the premise behind it is that... I mean, it, it simplifies it too much, but the idea of any time anywhere learning in the sense of that, that what's the constant is learning. So the traditional model of schooling tends to be um, you do your seat time, you pass. You grow older. You go to the next, you, 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 yep, you grow a year older, you go to the next grade level. You've learned some things, and some students haven't learned some things, but they move on. But there will, for many students, there's a hole in what they've learned, and those gaps tend to keep getting larger for many students. Whereas... Um, so there, what's the constant is the moving, but the learning is variable. So time's the constant. Pretty much most kids, every year they move, what's variable is how much they learn every single year. Flipping it to <coughs> proficiency-based learning model, truly the, the, the principle behind it is the constant needs to be the learning. Time becomes variable. Some kids, you know, everybody learns different things at different rates. If you master something quickly, you should have the opportunity to learn the next level of sophistication, not waiting a half a year if you tend to happen to master it halfway through the year. Um, it's really, really, really hard for a teacher. I got 15, 20, 25 students in front of me. To truly differentiate for all 25 students is virtually impossible. So if I'm, in a sense, my students are here, for, if I got my 25 students, and I know I had them all year, but these three have mastered it. These are almost there. These students are here. These students are here. It's really, really hard. But if oh, you've mastered it, you move on to the next person or what have you. There's so many different ways of doing it. In many ways, the system can make it much easier for the teachers because the students I have in front of me, they're ready to learn what I'm ready to teach them. Can you tell me if anybody in Maine is doing this? Different places are doing it to different levels well. Um, the, the, one of the best places I've seen that I've visited is actually in Boston. Um, it's called the Boston Day and Evening Academy. They have taken what they call overage learners, so students middle and high school, <coughs> and they basically have flunked out of public school, but Boston Day and Evening is still a public school. And they have shifted to a competency proficiency-based learning model, synonymous. And the, uh, they have their MCAS. They are the students there now who were previously failing out of traditional Boston public schools the students at Boston A in Evening Academy are outperforming the students in the regular Boston public schools when they historically were failing out. So it's, it's, it's a much more student-centered model. 
practices don't have to ship, but this the system is really designed to support the teachers and the students more to, when you're ready, you're moving on. If you haven't learned it, but by going through different pieces, um, we can sort of talk about what, it, what a traditional model looks like, where is Acton, and what a proficiency-based learning model looks like. I think probably, I don't know everything that happens at Acton, um, so that's why a discussion, I think, is necessary, because when you look at the different pieces, <coughs> the conversation can be, oh, we already do that, that's good. Oh, this practice might shift. One classic example that tends to be really sort of shifting the mindset on traditional education is assessment. Within a proficiency-based learning model or a student-centered learning model, you don't test it, you don't assess a student until you're pretty sure they're going to do well. If you know a student's not going to do well, and we give them the test anyway, and they don't do well, that could be argued to be malpractice. Because the, the psychological, um, if I know you're going to fail on something and I give it to you anyway, unless there are really powerful support systems in place that the feedback is really going to be taken in a positive way as a learning tool, if that's n you, we can't be sure that that's going to happen, then basically what assessments become is a punishment for not knowing something or being able to do something. And that's, that's not a traditional model. Proficiency-based learning model would be, all right, we're pretty sure you're ready to move on. Let's assess to see where you're at so that we have that data so we can then prepare you for the next level of piece. So that's just one example in regards to how assessment is viewed shifts within a proficiency-based learning model. A proficiency-based learning model really strives for assessment to be motivating, feedback-oriented, and growth-driven versus, oh, we spent the 10 days covering this. <coughs> Test yet. U5 pass, U5 don't. We're moving on to the next thing. Or U5 go to remediation or yeah. intervention or no. tutorial or whatever you want to call it. No. And so they never catch up. And the key, the key though, the key to make it work is just from the teach point. This, this isn't something you're going to have in one year. This is going to take several years yeah. to get there. But the key is to basically build a repertoire or a toolbox of things in a, in a sort of a semi-progression of what you may be responsible for, typically for the bulk of your kids. You may not be able to totally meet the kid that's still way, way, you know. There's a point where some kids are going to take age time out, meaning you're not going to keep a kid that's still not reading well, that's 14 years old in third grade. You're going to have to do something, but hopefully that child's probably identified special needs and there's other supports or whatever. But it can be done. There are some schools that are at different phases of this in the state. Um, I can, Haldale is one that's that's actually quite a ways along in the path. Or shoot too? Yep. Yep. And Gray is close. I visited um, Searsport with the previous principal. Um, they were one of the first to sort of shift in this direction even before LD 1422. Um, and some quite amazing things in regards to uh, proficiency based learning there. But the I principal is left. School also, of course, that's my old, that's why I went to grade school up through. And it's poor. And they actually did, they, they basically took a thing and said, this system we're doing now is failing kids. They just basically threw it out and started from scratch. And they, but they did have interesting things. Uh, one of the things that we actually, where I was, we took away from that was their academy, their after school academy kind of approach. Or their end of, they had trimester quasi, I'm trying to remember the principal's name. Uh, Greg. Greg, um, yeah, Potter? No. But anyway, they they would have a section. Palmer. Right? Yeah, Palmer. Yeah, Palmer. They go X number of weeks. <coughs> the kid would say, I'm ready for these assessments. The kid would take the assessments, or I'm not ready. And then they go to a, a, a after school five day for two weeks intensive to get caught up because maybe they were involved in sport and they just couldn't keep up. And then they get caught up and they go on. And many of the kids, this is a real kick and teeth, when you have that kind of structure, many of the kids actually finished their requirements by the end of their junior year. And it, they really didn't need to go to school a senior year. And what several did, which was really impressive, we had a panel, a big panel of kids when we were there. And several of the kids said, no, now I'm going to go back to the things I took my sophomore year or my junior year, my freshman year, that I didn't do well on, and I'm going to improve them. So they spent the last half of their senior year going back and basically all the places that they were not as high as they wanted to be, they moved themselves up. And the teachers had to be willing to go back and look at those records from that period of time and adjust it. That's why kids were motivated, though, know, because nothing was totally ever finished. They could always improve. But here we go. But I think your question is a good one, Mary, in the sense of what, how is this different? I think for each of the pieces, that's why I think this, this, this 
policy is going to require sort of a, a slow read where we discuss the different pieces and make sure everybody understands. And I have a feeling there's going to be significant um, revisions needed just because of, of the dialogue. But I think this is, this is a policy that will, because it requires the entire um, educational team really being on the same page. And I think there are some profound shifts. Um, yeah. Like, and again, another one, like at the high school level, I don't know if it would have to be here. This is part of the conversation. For example, with the LD 1422, with uh, a lot of the high school uh, policies that are being put into place, some schools, Searsport was one, one of the first ones to do this. Typically, uh, traditional uh, uh, graduation requirements are you need to have five years of English, four, five years of math, four years of associates, four years of science, so on and so on. Um, that's pretty traditional. Uh, some proficiency-based learning systems now, it's that. And um, in order to graduate, you need to read at the 10th grade level. Multiple measures, you can have a variety of ways of measuring that, or you need to write at a, a, a particular standard. Because the argument is, and it's true, you could get five years of English and still not be able to read at the fourth grade level. That happens. Currently. So because it's not a proficiency-based, <coughs> students did their time. So we could, if we want the time to be at peace, fine. If we want to make sure students have a, a, a certain amount of experience engaging in certain experiences, that's fine too. But we also want to make sure, can you do and do you know the things we want you to be able to know because we know, based upon evidence and research, that they will help you succeed. Giving a kid a diploma being able to read at the fourth grade level is not helping them succeed. So we want to make sure that we have a policy in place that will let something like that happen. And that's not an exaggeration. Students are graduating every year from high schools not being able to read fun at a functional level, yet they're getting a regular diploma, things like that. So that's not our issue here at, the, at K-8. But again, it's a it's a it's a it's a striking example of this one example of a difference. So, what would be the way we should proceed with this thing? Should we just skim through it? Well, I mean, we go through this K to eight, and then we're going to send our kids to Sanford, and they're going to be doing the same thing, or what? They have to have a proficiency diploma, which means they have to show competency in those with the uh, main learning results. Mary, would it, would it be helpful um, if we Including had, a foreign language. if we saw what the high school policy was before moving forward with this? They don't have. They don't want to know what they do. They're doing both right now. You can point it out in the proficiency base, and you also get your child will get like a GPA still. They're trying to ride the dual right now. Yeah, and the the what's the reading level? Yeah, and the the. My view of how most schools are approaching it, I do not believe that most schools are approaching PBL in the spirit of PBL. So, for example, when you look at um, like MSMA, we maybe can bring this next time. They have a sample graduation policy that in support of LD fourteen twenty two. So, the, 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 um, and there are a handful of other. Uh, we can send this to. This was part of our policy uh, meeting. There's a checklist of. Uh, policies that are tip that already exist in uh, most uh, main schools that relate to PBL, but only a small number of them are required. One of them is graduation policy, and sort of the key shifts in sort of we are now a proficiency-based system of learning is okay. Now, in addition to these credits, we're putting in some language in regards to uh, we have these other little things. So the main things <laughs> that schools are really doing is putting in some language in a policy that's really not changing on that too many things in the, on the ground for kids' experience. And um, the, the, the number one way schools are sort of saying they're proficiency-based is making a proficiency-based report card. Yet what's actually happening at the level of interaction of teaching and learning, nothing substantively changing. So that's why I, be I believe if, you really be if a system's going to shift to proficiency-based learning, reporting is the last thing you, you change because it's really, we want to make sure kids learn. Changing no, I'm report not, card is I'm not against kids this. Learn. I'm just wondering how this will play out. Yeah. That's why I, I don't want this to be, ah, here's a new policy, we're moving on to the next thing. Okay. Uh, I think there needs to be a convert, a long, extended conversation. To this is one of the reasons also construction approaches thrown into this, because and the cohort structures will help address that, because you can do it in pieces with it. And also address, we're talking about learning. Is constant with the kids, in, if it's in the three, four, five team, but the kids clearly ready for fifth, sixth grade mathematics. They have that opportunity. But yeah. they would have had that opportunity now anyway. Mm -hmm. If someone was smart enough mm -hmm. through our gifted and talented, they could, right, have be pulled out for the math time. No. 
I'm just saying. If you, if I you, think we you have think that, it in place. You think, you think it's that easy? <coughs> it doesn't happen. But anyway, I think we need to proceed. I haven't read the policy. I just came in, but I, I was just thinking about this. Is there any way to include in it somewhere that before we are moving to a cohort structure, before moving from, say, pre-K to from pre-K to second grade in the 35 cohort, you must obtain, you know, these set of standards. <laughs> so, for example, it, um, before moving down the chain of cohorts, or off the chain of cohorts. So like scroll it's down. Here. Yeah. Okay. It, but it, but we, I don't know. We, the only way we're going to proceed is proceed. <coughs> yeah. Uh, Has everyone to read this particular one? <laughs> this part. I th I feel like I don't want to rush this, yeah. and um, I don't know how everybody else on the board feels, but. I would like to take some time to really digest it before we do a first read. Well, um, so I don't. It's a first read, if it's more just to skim, so people see what it is. That's all we're talking like about. Like a tour. Yeah, tour. So we have a purpose statement, a scope, responsible parties, and the definitions. This is not unlike this part came from the D. Basically, what you see it came from the DOE area. So one just um, stay there, Mike. One helpful thing to know in regards to the state of Maine. And it kind of contrasts what I was saying in regards to how a lot of schools are uh, sort of approaching the the proficiency-based learning law. Maine, if you look at the D3 there, proficiency-based system, Maine defines a <coughs> proficiency-based system of learning, one in which the school district, all elements and facets of the school system are driven and formed by an understanding of standards. So, the, they, which I think is a little kind of out there, but I think you can make the case that even scheduling and building and grounds and transportation and food service in a, in a proficiency-based learning system, those are um, informed and driven by standards. Which, well, when you think of food service, that makes sense. I mean, th there, are st there are certain standards that um, the, the food service has to follow. We were just talking about standards in regards to, um, with Will's comments in regards to gloves, and it's what are the standards of cleanliness? Um, so when we talk about particularly curriculum, instruction, and assessment, decisions and structures and practices and procedures that relate to curriculum, instruction, and assessment, if you're truly proficiency-based at all levels of, of, of that work, standards are informing and driving the conversation. That is not typically how schools operate. Mm -hmm. Standards are not a part of the calculus, typically. So I can say what you hear from teachers' rooms. Yeah. Say, well, let's look and see what standards we're linking to. Yeah. You do hear that quite a lot in the building. What? So section E lays out, lays out the principles of PBL and the policy committee, there's a handful of documents out there um, that sort of inform that. So that might be something to have, ex ex um, have people have access to too or some of those um, guiding mm -hmm. documents, the research, the evidence. Uh, Just so this. people wonder why Kevin's picture up there. He's up there because the policy committee, Jeanette, Kevin, well, himself, and, and I'm on it right now. Can, right can now. be on it, so that's mm -hmm. the reason you're seeing him. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's his personal file. I just want to make sure people that looks like Kevin. Recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> Did it? I didn't. Nah, that's a younger Kevin. <laughs> so look at a few years bit. ago. This is kind of like last year. People started. They identified certain uh, standards, and they this is what they have to link like. I'll say, Mr. Cody, I heard him not, I don't know, not that long ago, he'd say, okay, this is what we're going to work on. These are the standards we're trying to adjust. So he's basically doing a learning objective by saying, this is the standard we're going to try to adjust. You have them up above your chalkboard, right? He's pointing to them quite often. You know, times okay? So students demonstrate mastery people moving on. And this is what he was talking about, reliable <coughs> assessments. Mm -hmm. Differentiating instruction. Now, as we're looking at this, the strategic plan, parts of it were written with a lot of these concepts in mind, except we hadn't fleshed this policy out yet. So now we've got to take this policy and go back to the strategic plan and make sure the pieces are in place. And that this is the main part of the policy in regards to it identifies key areas where particular policies and practice, uh, practices and procedures need to be put into place so that the, the system truly is being driven and informed by this standards. This would be like when you start talking about the cohort structure. 
what they'll do within the cohort. And, and to clarify too, because uh, for, 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 for the public too, when I say standards, I'm not meaning common core. I'm meaning standards. I know with, the, with a lot of the politics um, in the country, standards has become synonymous with Common Core. Common Core just one set of standards. This is not about Common Core. It's about Maine has its own set of learning results. Every single state has a set of standards and always will. In Acton's case, the strategic planning and revisioning process, you said you would adopt national, state, and local. It's the only one I've heard that says local standards. And currently, there's current sets of standards uh, that's the teachers. You took the, the current set and you fleshed out essentials, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Now, I think what's on the website doesn't match what your essentials currently are. There you go, Mike. Is that correct, Mike? I'm pretty sure they don't. <laughs> okay. We basically unpack. We unpack. You and I have talked about this several times. <coughs> we unpack the standards to try to make a manageable classroom model, design <coughs> some standards. You know, to make it make it doable. So I have, you know, like for seventh or eighth grade, I've got you know eight or nine yeah. standards that have been unpacked as a as a science vertical team, so to speak, that we can use and manage in the realistic classroom setting. How does that affect college acceptance? Because that I'm I'm just from my experience, they didn't ask what her standards were. They wanted to know her GPA and her class rank. That's what they wanted. Great schools. So, I mean, are they still going to be, it's how not do a they problem. assess that? So, no, I mean, obviously not at eighth grade, but. I'm no, sure. that's a really good question. So, it's great a common school, question. Well, it, it's a common question. It's a good question. Um, and the, the Great Schools Partnership, they're a, uh, a group out of, they used to be affiliated with the um, University of Southern Maine. They provide a lot of school coaches for Maine schools. They now, um, um, sort of run what's called the New England Secondary School Consortium. They're really trying to help a lot of the schools in New England figure out proficiency-based learning. And that was one of the first questions that came up. So they went around and they did sort of the study and they talked to the universities and the colleges in New England asking them that question. And basically what admissions officers said to them <coughs> were, it's, a, it's an understandable concern, but what people have to, and this is what they said to uh, the folks at the great schools is, the, the belief that there was a, it was uh, the same anyway is not, all the schools are different anyway. So basically admissions, they're so used to every school being different and doing things in different ways. They take GPA, they take all these things, but they're able to take whatever way schools organize things to figure out who is ready, you know, who, who will make it be a good match for their school. Um, and a good example of we're all used to familiar, like most schools, the traditional system is we have A, B, C's, D's, and F's. But the thing is, an A from Sanford and an A from Kennebunk and an A from Massabesic are three very different things. So admissions officers can't even look at an A and say this is the same thing because they have to know, I did not only do they need to know sort of, you know, they're getting portfolios from some students, they're getting grades from others, some schools are getting A, B's, and C's, and other schools they're already getting meets and exceeds. <coughs> Every school has its own language. <clears throat> and the missions that they're, they're fine with getting the different stuff because they look for all these different pieces of information. So the answer they gave to Great Schools Partnership is, this is fine. I mean, if it, bottom line is what they said is, if kids learn more, it's going to help them um, get into a better school. And there's solid evidence that a, a, a system that's more student-centered that can really help students maximize what they're learning so there's less downtime because I've learned that already. Um, and sending away for other kids to catch up. For, so if they, they can move on and advance faster or if they're really struggling, they can have the supports they need. More kids will learn. They'll have a better package to submit to the, the schools. But I thought that was really interesting. The, well, um, and also, um, and I, I can look into... I, I don't know the current number, but they, they at one time, I'm going to say two and a half years ago, the same thing, Don Sabisky was helped part of that process. Yeah, he was the, with the uh, DOE. He's the former, not deputy commissioner, but head of instruction for the, the DOE. They had 67 of the New England colleges agree to accept the, the uh, standards-based report card, or transcript. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I can speak personally of a particular student that was in eighth grade that wanted to go to the math, me and math and science thing up to Limestone. Mm -hmm. We sent them a proficiency diploma, uh, transcript, so to speak, and with this phone call. And the parent was wicked concerned because she had her sister up that was a junior there who went under the old 9200 if you will. And this other kid was, you know, able to do this, able to do this, all marked off, and they're like, uh, how do I interpret this? So we 
commission person, you walk through it. He goes, this actually tells me way more than what the old thing is. He says, yeah, because it tells you, this is what the kid can do, this is what the kid can't do yet. And but I got in, it's been fine. I can try to, um, I can contact uh, the folks over there <coughs> for the running the report of the paper that actually talks about what the college has said. If, yeah. I, if you want, if you're yeah, interested. Yeah, I mean, that would be, you know. Yeah, it nice is. To and it's going to be a continued question by it all public, because all that's public, what yeah. we're used to. Absolutely, because we don't, we don't want to say, you, you don't want to send students <coughs> to the, you don't want the, the whole point of this is to, to set students up for greater success yeah. not to put them at a disadvantage yeah. is so, it a point absolutely. that more schools that do this the colleges will be more used to seeing it I, I think and that they'll understand it easier I think they already do yeah mm -hmm. I, I but it'll become more commonplace and more more it's more already pretty common as many questions maybe yeah I think it's more of the parent concern I think the, the concerns parents have colleges don't have them the, the concerns that you're articulating, which I think makes a lot of sense from a parent perspective, from colleges don't have that concern. We think they will, we think they should, but they don't because for years they've been getting different things all the time anyway. And this is just another different thing. But we don't know if Stanford's doing this yet as to an extent that you want to do it at Active. I know they weren't as of last year. They're, they're still figuring heading it out. in that direction. No. It's the speed at which it gets done is, is the real issue. They were going to do it, the parents got upset, and the parents got both they got your a b's and c's and they got the proficiency so i think the teachers are doing that, that they were last year? year i don't know what happened no, this that's, year that's i think been no for i a think while. i believe the freshman class have to yeah. be recorded that the current freshman class yeah i was going to say kennedy graduated last year and, the current and they freshman didn't do that for because her. They they yeah yes that's by yes. 2000 whatever it is and I, but i think that the 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 the, the, the at least from my understanding and my intent with the the the, with the, the policy here is sort of looking at, we're K-8, so we want to set students up to be as successful in transitioning to high school. <coughs> so we want the system to maximize so that when this, for the students to be as ready and as advanced as they can be um, for success at, 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 in ninth grade and beyond at, at high school, whatever Sanford chooses to do. It would be nice though well, if, if the high school matched what we did for our <coughs> kids. You know, if we set them up for this great it would and then be. they go foundation, to high and school. then they go to a high school that doesn't require as much. I'm just Let curious. Can I speak on options this? and whatnot? No, these months are good. Ago, months ago, I and, and a group of us attended the Sanford School Department um, as they started implementing the program Educate um, or Empower. Um, I initiated, I initiated, and we initiated the, uh, the the deployment of this system, which was a purpose based driven system. Um, and, and, and we initiated it as well, so our data would potentially align with their data. Well, that's that, I've talked to the student since then. What they've done from last time they were, which is, I'm going back about four or five months, was they did something similar to what Dave was talking about. You got your essential. They identified the essentials. They put and what the superintendent wanted was, look, I just want to be able to record so the teaching going to record that they met that essential. They met that essential. So. They're not going to the level that we're talking about. And they also do the still, whatever they do, eight or hundred ABCs or whatever the number is. So he wants to be able to spit out both, and that's why Trish was saying they can have both. So it sounds like they're trying to make a transition and eventually. I go think you're, I think you're going to see that they're going to be doing it more in the you know younger mm -hmm. and then work forward. Now that's what a lot of like Mass and Beast has been doing. That yeah. they've been much more successful at the elementary and the middle school. But level they've been on this journey for uh, more than five years. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in, I, I'll repeat on Paul's case, they had their first kids graduate, I think, two years ago that started with this process in kindergarten. So they've been on this for 14 years. And those kids leaving don't have a traditional report card, uh, transcript. They don't have class rank. They don't have any of that stuff. You know, <coughs> it's just this is what the kid can do. Right. They've been, they're accepted to some of the best schools, too. And I think there's also like a, um, a confusion at the two. Like a lot of schools have they've interpreted the proficiency-based learning law and system as, okay, we can't have ABCs anymore. No. Absolutely can. I mean, I, I, I don't think ABCs, it's just what do they mean? So I, I think regardless of um, what happens here, whatever Sanford does, I think um, I'm not 100% confident that Sanford's going to get it right. Um, I'm worried about that personally. Um, and if, let's say, they, they approach the proficiency-based learning law in a way that I don't think is as good for kids as it should be, I wouldn't want, uh, you know, if it's subpar there, I wouldn't want it still to be subpar here. But if we can set the students up to be able to transition well there, 
Like, for example, if they're used to, if, if they're getting meets and exceeds here, but they're getting A, B's, and C's still there, that might be a confusion for students. Well, it could be A, B's, and C's here. This, the, 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 I would still want the system to be organized here in a way. I would want the policy to support um, the, the, the learning environment and the interactions and the way the structures are so that students can, can maximize the amount of learning that, that they have the opportunity. It's really about maximizing opportunities to learn. And the traditional systems don't do that. There's a lot of sit and wait. And if we can l minimize the sit and wait for kids, and a lot of it's you know, structurally, they will learn more they learn more, they're just going to be that much more successful at Sanford. And I think, I would bet, and I would take this gamble, because I think this, this, this is one <laughs> great little school. I mean, and it's little compared to a lot of these schools. Because of um, Acton's size, it can be nimble. Sanford and Massabesics, they are larger, they can't be as nimble. My gut is, if we, if, if we continue to move in this direction, they will mimic us. When they get to the eighth grade level, if the students mm -hmm. and um, let's say they they get beyond those standards and they're ready for the ninth grade freshman year type standards, mm -hmm. is that going to be available to them here? That, that I, I would hope in time. Policy yeah. would expect. Uh, and I would say policy would demand that to be. If a student, there's nothing to say, and again, po the, the policy doesn't dictate how it happens. But I, w I would say, if I've got a seventh grader ready to learn calculus, right. then we make that opportunity available. Mm -hmm. Now, it could mean they go to Sanford, or it means we make sure we have somebody here who can teach calculus. Okay. I cool. could see the upper cohort starting to teach ninth and tenth grade level classes because the kids are ready. But they can do it here. Okay. And so the, that's that. I would be worried about is if they just get placed in freshman courses. Again. I would hope that, that the guy happened to know that that in Mr. Noel's case. Um, how many kids right now? Do you guys know four, four kids in geometry? Three. Three, three, three kids in geometry? Yeah. So they, he, I have to know from the guides that they, those guys in math get placed very well. They, right. they don't get moved. Once they get there, they don't have to drop back or whatever. Right. Pretty well, you know, math may lend itself a little easy to that. I don't know. Because you could give a, as college admissions, I could give that. You're the student. I could say, hey, why don't you just take this thing? And I know that these are the tricky things. If you can get those, well, then, hey, yeah. you're on to algebra two or whatever it is. Right. <coughs> so. yeah. somehow, somehow we need to get our computer systems to be compatible though with Sanford because there's nothing worse than going to a workshop at Sanford and they put up a screen and there's all these blank spots of these standards that haven't been met and they're all acting kids where every single Sanford kid has an M or Whatever they're um, using because for it's just not getting transferred every over. Single, every single that. blank is yeah. an acting kit. Yeah. Yeah. No transfer. No, no, no. 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 Just picked up on that. Yeah. Very frustrating. No, was the, was yeah. that in educate? What? Yes. Was that in their educate version? Yes. Was it? Yes, it was. That's what. That's what I was bringing up. That's a good point. Is, yeah. Um, we we went with educate so our data can transition to their data. So when our kids graduate here. We can simply import the data into this. Only system. if our standards match this. Right, only if their standards match this. And so that so everything yeah, lines up. It's a bigger beast to right. tame than yeah. just filling in a block. Now the other option data. you can do, and I did something similar to this when I did a migration to educate. <coughs> you, you, you basically print out that form that they're talking about, what they're gonna get in ninth grade. And I'm gonna pick Tracy. Tracy's gonna sit down and say, Yeah, I know that kid can do that. You just you manually put that on paper and they just import it. Um, and with the class size that we have coming out of 8th grade, that would be a very easy thing to do. Tracy um, and, and everybody, from my understanding, Sanford is looking into backfilling yeah. um, Acton's students with the appropriate standards, um, which will fill in all of those blanks with um, AP or auto promote or a number if they've scored a number. Because that is demoralizing to a kid. Mm -hmm. No question. And we're going to have that same problem. Say, say, we, say, we, <coughs> say we used Educate, we put that in. You're going to start with, you're going to report everybody. People that are in fifth grade, they're already going to have all these blanks before them. You're going to have, have a process to fill those. Auto promote or whatever. All right. I think we probably can just say, put this out. We'll put this out to, yeah. to the staff and everybody and put it on the website and say, people read. There'll be discussion at the June 9th to go forward. Do we want a mechanism for people to, I think what might be helpful to listening to uh, just this brief discussion is... Um, Same comment. Idea. Yeah, and this made questions. You know, because I think this is going to raise a lot of questions. And again, this is, I'd like to have a lot of these discussions. 
um, prior to the, the you know adoption mm -hmm. but then I think even after adoption um, continue to have conversations about the implications for practice because again policy is doesn't really dictate in with great specificity the how just the and I, what I think is key here is that the, the principles behind the policy are evidence and research based so they're grounded in you know the best data we have available on what works best for kids and the practices and the procedures, and specifically the, the, the specificity of actually what that means in behavior with teachers and kids and administrators, that needs to be figured out. And I think that's, that's up to the, 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 the administration and the teachers to, to, to do. And again, that requires where does it jive, where, does it, where doesn't it jive, and I think that might begin with if we share this out maybe at this stage. Um, I don't actually, I don't, I don't think, I think comments are fine, but I would like feedback to be geared to questions first, because I think there might be, let's understand before we get into deep debate. Mm -hmm. So Makes sense. So, um, so then we'll put this on the website as a proposed? As an early working draft, draft, draft of the PBL a draft policy. I'm thinking a couple, of, couple items there. I was thinking that because we're talking June 9th, that we come up with the question comment process, and then we use the phone call thing. Call everybody, let them know. Please look. If they want a paper copy, we can send them home to a child or something like that. It's part of this. Uh, to families? Yeah. Maybe we'll target just maybe third grade and up this, at this juncture. I'm wondering if that'll be too much too soon. Well, we have, if we're yeah. get, we want to get some information before June 9th, it's only a couple weeks away. Yeah, I was thinking mainly staff, but. Oh, staff. Okay. But I don't know. That's I know right. what does the committee think? Yes, everybody. Everybody. Public, everyone, right? You questions, can, comments? The invitation will be to June 9th to come in. All right, we'll get a lot Probably of questions. Probably going to use the cafeteria for spreading out. Plus, it might be cool. I don't know. <laughs> so then June 9th, <laughs> okay. clarify, because um, I'm going to have an added task here to facilitate. Um, that'll, will there be any way to find out how many folks we're going to be having on June 9th? So I can plan accordingly. <laughs> No, make a lot of copies. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think I think if we get this out now and say that any um, questions that are going to be presented could be sent in ahead of time yep. before June 9th to you, then on June 9th we could have that people you'd be more ready to answer questions yep. and some of those gaps could be filled, some of those blank spaces could be filled in at that time. But I, I don't I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's really reasonable to think that yeah. we're going to accomplish everything on June 9th with no. this policy. We can make some make some. So did you say this is going to go out to the staff a question? You said something yeah. about the staff. <laughs> yeah. That wants the staff and public. So something will be coming like, to the staff before the June 9th meeting. Yeah, right? like, I, I, like, or, right, like or, right away. I get you. Like tomorrow or the next day. And, and, and to clarify, too, I think this is, again, another good example of the role clarity piece. Then this is my thing, so I'm throwing this out as a question. Um, so I think here's a good example of this is, this is what board, this is what one of the key um, tasks of a school committee is to set policy. However, because I think this is really significant, I think it would benefit from significant input and dialogue from public and staff. Mm -hmm. So for me, for this, the, the June 9th, um, I see it primarily being the objective of that by the end of the evening um, the goal would be to solicit and generate questions comments and concerns um, individuals have about you know, this policy so that they can under so that people walk away with a better understanding of this initial draft and that we as a committee have a better understanding of where questions and con concerns arise so we can take those data to make revisions, and I anticipate significant revisions. Um, I do not see it as a deliberative, we're all working collaboratively as a large group and community and staff to write policy. No. We write policy, but we're opening up the dialogue to get feedback to inform so that we can craft a policy that, peop that, that will work here, and that sort of thing. So I think that, that, that would be the key mm -hmm. distinction. So I think it would be, because I can see this significantly being revised. But again, that would be my objective for June 9th, is to open up a dialogue, to mm -hmm. answer questions, to generate questions, comments, and concerns, so that we can have that additional data con to continue to draft. 
Does that make sense? Yes. But I want to be upfront with that because I think people could enter that June 9th thinking, oh, we're here to write policy. No, we're, you're here to give feedback about a draft of policy so that we can continue to do that work. So. It all goes back, Kevin, to the communication piece. We just want to make sure that people are being informed about what's going on and that their voices absolutely. are being heard. Absolutely. And absolute transparency. This is yep. our best stab at it at this point. And um, so, you know, ideally, when ultimately this policy gets put into place, I, I don't, I, the goal I, I think would be is, here's a policy, we have significant understanding of the implications, we can do it, we're ready to do it, we want to do it. And I, I want to be at that place, so. And that kind of brings us in the next section, and we'll try to do this, fairly, this first part fairly quick so we can get to a piece that I think would help us with this from a learning point of view. So next we will school committee meeting May, May, May 26, number two, because we this is to replace the July one. There is no right now scheduled no board meeting in July. Okay. So uh, why tonight? Okay. What I want to talk about is you guys probably all remember that the budget process we ended up and we had a area we called them the buckets, but basically it was a way to address reserve issues, uh, issues of uncertainty, and to um, help. Eventually, I mean, this 15, 16, you have a tighter budgeting process. Because currently, in your budgeting process, you were, you were prior to this year, you were, in each of your articles, you had built in, let's just say, just in case money. Okay? That just in case money is what, over the years, has built up the undesignated account to whatever level it was when we started the budget. Okay? The budget during the budgeting process, we have those reserve accounts set. So the 15-16 budget does not have in those articles those additional funds. Okay? <coughs> budget 14-15 had those additional monies into it. This is where the pre-K is getting funded from. This is how we're able to do this. Because right now we have a projection called budget less actuals. Where do we stand? Would you give us the number? Where do we stand right now? Right now, um, if we meet all our required obligations, so payroll, everything like that, um, we should have an ending balance of $170,793. That's what the amount would have gone into undesignated, which is mainly driven from the tuition in Article 2, which is about 110. And in special education, there's about 38,000 there that we had for special needs uh, just in cases as And so well. both of those now are addressed by a bucket. <coughs> so the 15-16 budget, we did not put that 110000 Actually, we did until the budget passed. And then the last board meeting, we returned the 110 to the town, which got us to an overall budget of less than a percent increase. Okay? So we have this money. We have choices here. This is really up to the school committee to decide what they want to do with this money. We've encumbered. And I'm gonna, you'll see in a second, Andy, I'm looking at you, because your name's actually coming up right now. But, so we have the reserves in place. So what are we going to do? What should have happened, I, I would, it would have been nice if you had had a strategic plan right along, and you'd say, oh, gee, we've got $20,000 left overall. We need to fix that, or we need to buy these support books, or whatever. That should have been taking place every year, okay? So that you end your budget close to zero, okay? So, what started out was we started with priorities. Well, the priorities that I had were pre-K. How am I going to get pre-K funded? We had the space. I knew we could address transportation if people wanted to. Now we got to come up with paying for the teacher. <coughs> we got to come up with, um, which got into the budget as its position with, through the attrition of other people. And we had to come up with the startup costs of the program and so forth, playground equipment, et cetera. So we created a list of priorities. And, and there's about five major steps. But this should be an annual process. A year from now, we should be able to take our strategic plan and these lists that I've asked staff to try to create, which one of these should can we expend to meet a need that we've determined that we maybe didn't quite budget for, we didn't think we could get. Now, we'll go to the next slide for a second. So this is what's taking place in this process. I knew when I came in, this is the process that needed to take place. So even back in December, I started thinking, of how, and it was December, on middle of December, I said, how can I do this for the pre-K? Because that's from the state. So on 123, the first example of this is Kim Oliver and Andrew being met on encumbering items 
as the year end. Do you remember that? Talking about you're going to get try to get that budget down to zero. And where does his line stand right now? If we're all encumbered, if everything happens. Fourteen hundred dollars. Fourteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> he might, he'll be next, uh, and if we can. Get so he is. He has said, "I need this, 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 and this," and he's got everything lined up, ready to go. Now, we're not issuing those POs until we get closer, because he might have had an emergency. You know, we, this was back in January, where we, and he might have had an emergency with us. And so, <clears throat> for instance, we know now we're going to be able to get the what is it? The floor cleaner, maybe. Maybe. Okay. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Of course. Yeah. Right. And so that's going to liberate his budget next year a little bit to be able to address some other need in the building. Okay? So basically the budget process took place. We started to finish. And four and I got this date wrong. This should be up above. But uh, I'm going to jump down here. This should be up here. Four, Mike, Corey, and I started brainstorming about what does this school need? I said, what's your plan for long-term replacement of equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> so we got brainstorming. We so we ended up having I don't know how many meetings do we have? Quite a few. Mm -hmm. And we came up with subsequent meetings and I actually went and visited other schools. He started talking to other tech people in other schools. So something you're gonna to see tonight is directly linked to this. And it's gonna be if you if the board wants to go with it, this is the direction we'll go and some of that money may be addressed in that. So the next thing we had the pre K plan. These are the things we just talked about. So then around 49, identified areas, pre-K, each content area, and created sheets. And I shared these with certain staff people and asked them to put on those things. And we, some people changed the name to wish list. But the key is, this is something that they need online. Now, in this lady's case, what did you do? I researched what I would need to support um, next-gen science, um, K-8. Because there's lacking in there. Lacking. And, and you want to speak to what Lisa and I did meet with Lisa and spoke with Lisa about how she and I could work together to support and what would be best um, for material. Um, and I showed her what I, I found and um, she thought was outstanding. So. Okay, so they've got these lists. Basically, there's a big long list and it's on a computer and it tallies up and so forth. Now, on 416 to 423, those were the lists. And I gave a deadline on May 10th, which is a Sunday, and I wanted the 11th. But um, what's happened is people are really starting to get, and they've needed extended time. I know the pre-K to two area, they were working on additional stuff last week. Okay, next slide. So these are the main priorities that we had determined administratively, and then we've gone to uh, those lists would be the staff. So we have pre-K startup. There's three items. Boom, boom, boom. Those have a dollar tag to it. We know we had a literacy problem. We've Adept, we're going to address it through a Luke Calkins program. Uh, and the, one of the reasons we're choosing that, <coughs> Tracy, is isn't that what Sanford has decided to go with big time? And so we have the opportunity to have the PD linked to there and to reduce our cost. I'm not, I mean, I, Kevin and I talked about this particular There's a bunch of writing programs out there. I think there's several that are very equal to each other as long as you stick to them with somewhat fidelity over a period of time. That's the key. And so uh, Rachel did research on several, and this is the one that she feels we should go with, and so that's the one we're going to go with, plus the potential for PD overlap and all that. What grade levels? It goes all the way to K-8. All the way? K-8. Okay, so you use it, okay. This is going to have a price tag, and that's what's going to come out of that 170, whatever it was. Network upgrade. Um, we have to, to do address some, remember we are talking about Mike and I brainstorm stuff back here? Uh, one of the things you have to do in order to have decent speed at which things can happen, we need to do some upgrade. The majority of it will be paid by E-rate, but we need about seven, seven grand. about seven of our side, and they're going to pay how much? Eighty percent. They're going to pay eighty percent. Twenty-six thousand. E and for people who don't know what that is, is that's basically the the uh, telephone companies have to give back to schools because they overcharge people. Okay, so then we have these end of year lists, and the and the plan was. That the admins prioritize, and then team leaders, then staff, then back to admin, then finally the school committee. Well, remember May 10th was when I was hoping to get them, and well, it isn't. So we're not. We're kind of in. It. We kind of jumped. We did this a little bit for these pieces. We jumped. Out. I sent an email out to them. And we said so. We talked to the staff on Thursday a little bit, and we presented one particular item, which we're going to talk about right here. And this is the big one here. Okay, I think that's the last slide, isn't it, Mike? And this is where Mike's going to pick up. 
Okay? And I just want to put a, uh, a comment regarding this. Every school district around us is getting ready to go to this one-to-one -one concept. Massabese will be one-to-one -one pretty much next year, all grade levels, kindergarten up. Other districts, very affluent districts, have been one-to-one -one for a while. We actually have the opportunity maybe to do this next year. And that's what Mike's going to talk about. <coughs> yeah, this time I can present to you. And by the way, he should get kudos for this because I wouldn't dare guess how many hours he's already put in to try uh, well, try this combination. Play with it. And he's done all you want. Uh, I'm going to deal with the uh, product people too. And he tested it to make sure it works. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about I should stick you on the um, vendors. Yes. You can get some free products. <laughs> pretty good at that. Yeah. Um, so 2015, uh, 15, 16, and beyond proposal, one to one. Um, one device for every student, pre-K through eight. And this can be whittled down in pieces. It doesn't have to be all in one, but um, this is uh, the uh, big picture. Um, every student having their own device gives them the resources to um, at their fin fingertips. The big ones that everybody needs a device for is research, writing, presenting, numeracy, Excel, or um, calculations. Um, educational enrichment tools, IXL, Education City, um, potentially Alexia, software tools and resources that help um, bridge that gap in the, in the standards or the proficiency level of students. Um, better individual learning, which I can present after the slideshow to give you an example. Um, standardized assessments won't be impacting learning as much. Um, every kid can just grab their device and test when the teachers are ready to test them. And it'll give the teachers the freedom to dot, 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 do whatever they need to accomplish or work. Um, and not have to worry about, you know, having access to devices for the kids. There's a lot more to that, but we won't go into it. Yeah. That slide actually has a lot. Yeah, the, the, um, this um, is already in place. Kindergarten through second grade, uh, third grade maybe. Um, there are five iPads with those headphones um, in each classroom, like this, with uh, military grade cases so they can be thrown around and um, played with by students. The headphones come in handy when they use um, <coughs> document software for dictation, so it's difficult typing on these things. Um, you are able to, but and also, young, younger students K through two um, <clears throat> have trouble writing anyway, so dictation will help them get their words out onto uh, a digital paper. Um, a solution that is most cost effective going into one and one are Chromebooks, and I've looked at different variations and, and um, ways to uh, deliver them. Um, this one in particular has a handle, which would be great for a little kid to grab as they walk to their next class. Um, the model I'm looking at is black, so it doesn't get dirty. That white one I, I read <laughs> gets dirty really fast. So, um, Chocolate, um, peanut butter. And then we have our MacBook Airs. Um, seventh and eighth grade currently have these. I've looked at the numbers to supply sixth grade with um, the same device so everybody's on the same playing field in the cohort um, but there's different ways that we can um, deploy these devices to the students um, and different strategies we want to do it and it all comes down to um, what people want um, this so is it option number one too. Hmm? and it comes down to money <laughs> money money <laughs> money is a big one this and you'll see the breakdown is based on on money too the first option is the most expensive option um, I believe this one is, yeah, this one is distributed by cohort. So you have your pre-K to second grade is one cohort. They'll all have iPads with the headphones and the rugged cases. Third through fifth grade <coughs> is another cohort. And they'll have Chromebooks. And sixth grade grade, that cohort would have MacBooks. That way everybody would be on the same operating system, the same playing field, as far as the teachers, you know, developing the lesson plans. Um, and the curriculum. But I, I do want to mention a comment on this. We're mm -hmm. in our second year, we're going into our third year of our MLTI. Fourth year, you replace. I don't believe they're going to go with MacBooks ever again because of the cost point. Yeah. 
right into point. the function of what you're trying to do. That list that was at the beginning of the slide, what those people do, research, presentation, writing, numeracy, those can be all done in a web browser very effectively. And I think you're going to see the state and they're no longer going to support this. So <coughs> I, would, I would be hesitant about going to this option myself. Yeah. <coughs> um, this option, and then there, uh, there can be other <coughs> options, these are the three big ones I thought of, um, is more based on um, skill and, yeah. and, and ability. Um, we discovered that second graders are capable of doing presentations um, and, and giving them an iPad would hold them back from their ability. Um, giving them one of these would help them be more productive in their learning and education. That's a Chromebook in mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm just curious about the prices. So, like, when I'm looking at like the Chromebook for every student, two to five. Mm -hmm. So, 84 units we need, 84 kids, yeah. and it's 200 dollars per Chromebook. Yeah. So, is that the same with the MacBook Airs? Is it only 4.4? Units are in 10 packs or five packs, so 4.4 for five pack. Oh, okay. So it's they're basically a thousand dollars. Five piece. times 4.4. Right. It's about five times the price of the Chromebook. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, my Chromebook prices have been in anywhere in the range of 179 to 500 dollars. Um, the device with the handle is the one I prefer. Um, it's got the durability um, and, and the convenience of the handle. Do they have um, cases? Uh, no, that that is an option. It's in the it's in the it's in my my list there to have a case. Oh, sorry, missed that. It's, yeah. it's in the it's in the. I think that's list, key. But um. If the thing's not going home and it has a handle, they're really you can save you know twenty bucks per device. Not <coughs> device but it's there as an option. Um, Mike, can I ask an, a question? Is one of the proposals going to show like just Chromebooks for everybody, or do you want to stick with the Mac Airs because the last one? You read your mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. The last proposal is Chromebooks two through sixth grade. Um, <coughs> It is the most cost-effective way to put one-to-one -one devices in kids. Um, Pre-K through first grade aren't really at the level to handle um, the, uh, the, the uh, trackpad and the keyboard as well as second through sixth grade. Um, again, the concern comes down to the teacher having to differentiate, not based on the student's skill, but on the device that they have in their hand as well. Um, it's easy to unify a lesson if they stick to one device. Um, if everyone is using everything inside the cloud and Google Docs, and stuff right? Like you can still use it. You can still use a MacBook Air and do everything on Google Chrome. Okay. So you can base your lesson, and I can present I mean, to we're, you. We're doing all the policy work in Google. Docs. Google, Google Docs. yeah. So you can take and you can do it on an iPad. So you can take anything on Google Cloud on an iPad, and so. And it all comes. The, the real advantage of doing everything in the cloud is, a kid can leave the device at school right. and go home. And if they have access to any device that's web connected, they can still get to it. Mm -hmm. So they could start a paper here at school. They can go home, have grandma, whatever, read it over with them. They read the and they can come back and back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever we end up doing with the learning management system, maybe educate that also would be accessible by the kid here at school. And um, the these devices, we want to make sure, by MLTI requirements, the 7th and 8th have to have the right to take them home. Yeah. Here, they don't. Oh, this still has the MacBooks in it. The 7th and 8th would sell the Mac because they're, pay, they're basically they're paid, paid for, for another two years. Right. Okay. And when they do the next deployment, they're going to, I, I predict, <coughs> they're going to say, here's X dollars. Do yeah. what you want. As long so, as you guarantee the 7th and 8th have devices and they go home. We don't care. So are there more MacBooks in the previous one, previous slide? It was 6, yeah. 7th, and 8th. Oh, uh, one grade level difference. Okay. 6, 7th, and 8th. That way they, 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 they that So basically, to do this just the 6th grade, it's 46,000 versus... It's another 12,000. Just for one grade. Okay. Thanks. 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 <laughs> you want to just mention what you or the other districts as far as the Chromebook guide purchasing concept? Is this the point, time to do it? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, at this point, the, the Chromebook that I'm looking at, um, purchasing one-to-one, -one, um, they have a price point of 194 per, 
per device or anywhere between one ninety and two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but only until June first. You know, they want you to, to buy it. Um, I've worked. I'm working with um, other York school districts and the tech directors in other York districts to work together as a, a, as a group and do a, a mass purchase <coughs> to try to get that price point or even lower um, when it, when we actually do the the, the purchase. So. It might be time time restricted, <coughs> this price point and, and getting these devices. Um, but I'm also working with other districts to try to get leverage. A lot, yeah, uh, leverage in the large purchasing power. Um, but from all of my calculations, it's about fifteen thousand dollars difference from going cohort aligned to Chrome, well, basically Chromebook um, on the majority of the school. Is there another slide? Yeah, um, explaining um, the computer lab and media centers using the old devices. Um, I can distribute the old the old MacBooks, white ones. I can upgrade them um, and distribute them into the key locations for specialized software um, like <coughs> music and Travis um, using GarageBand to do his lessons. The kids can still take out a laptop that has GarageBand on it and do what they need to do in his class to get you know, whatever remember, lesson he remember has. Remember the presentation he did? But the thing mm -hmm. is, you know, you also found stuff that is done through apps, through mm -hmm. a browser now that does stuff similar to yeah. that. That cloud piece is just going to grow and grow. Yeah, you know? the apps are growing on, on the cloud. It's growing. And then there are other resources available too besides the apps themselves. So, but, and that also frees up, since the computer lab won't be utilized as often or as much for, you know, lessons and classroom activities. It frees up the ed tech and the computer lab to go into the rooms and be more mobile in supporting classroom lessons and classroom activities using the technology. So it would be out as a as a mobile uh, support. Um, that could be really critical when we finally finalize on the learning management software because both the teacher and the kid are going to need help in that mm -hmm. realm. And so having that person other than just the teacher, that I think that's going to. This number hasn't been completely finalized yet. I just put a request in to order some parts to test to see you know, which parts would be the best um, upgrade to enhance what we currently have to potentially use it for another three to five years in, in a uh, effective manner. Um, so this number could be anywhere between you know where it is seven thousand to ten thousand, depending on what parts I get. It could even be less. I might find you know I don't need all of this to make it work better. The likelihood of the white ones being upgraded, probably not, but definitely the lab. Would you agree? Because the white ones are already, you're already looking at six years of age. Well, oh, I think we can get more. We can get another three or five out of the white ones. They're, on the, they're running on the same hardware. They're pretty much they're just okay. more uh, breakable because they move around. <laughs> um, so the estimated grand total for the whole picture, if you look at the low end of the spectrum to the high end of the, of the spectrum, is forty one to fifty two thousand dollars and that's still it could fluctuate depending on the direction or approach we want to take. Now the, the, we met with the staff and it was on Wednesday or Thursday and they said if you can do it, do it. That was their at least that's the impression I got when we, we talked to so forth. Um, remember those other lists, those other priorities have to take place first. So if, if you guys want to go with this one to one concept, we'll try to. And we'll try to get it as close to probably that, probably that one as we can. But we may not be able to do it all in one year. We might have to wait another year to get the budget for you know, one class worth of core. But we might be able to use the white ones in the meantime. Yes sir. Two questions. First is practice question. So if we are going one to one fully, if that's the goal, um, what <coughs> training do staff have around blended learning, flipped classroom, that sort of stuff? Who's going to model that now? That's going to be part. Of, now they have, they don't yet because that's not something that even the, but this, the middle school. I don't see that happening that much there. But if we're going to invest in technology, I'd like us to have the chops to maximize the utility. You're going to model what it, it could look like. I was going to use this, but it, as, uh, I don't have. Oops. All right, I'm going to present to you. I'm a teacher. Let's pretend I'm a teacher. 
and I just um, assigned my students a lesson um, using Google and their email. Can you use the Google Classroom? Yeah. Yes, I will. Okay. And you can do this in many ways using Google Classroom, using um, um, a learning management system like Educate. If we ever move in that direction, well, I need to get everything on the right on the same screen. This is difficult. All right, so I'm that st student, and I just logged into my email. And my teacher assigned me something. And I can be at home. I don't have to be in, in school. I can just get it, maybe an IM from my teacher or an email from my teacher um, assigning me something. And it says right here, um, the teacher has invited you to um, Technology 101 class. And he assigned you a new assignment, Computer Basics. <coughs> so I can go to here and click on this lesson. And this is, could be very useful. I can see it in language arts um, in particular. Um, but it, it, it explains to me um, to review the, the YouTube video here um, and the included URL. So I'll, I, I'll, let's pretend I watch this video and just click on it and it will open up. Now they could be at home. I'll set for a day or two. Still have access. Well, I can watch all of them. You could be in Florida. Florida. Mm -hmm. But hopefully it's archived. They can go back to it any time they want. Mm -hmm. Which is at the street. They can pace. repeat it as many times as they need to. Today, computers are all around us. From desktop computers to smartphones, they are changing the way that we live our lives. But have you ever asked yourself, what exactly is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that manipulates information or data. Alright, let's end it there and let's pretend we watched that whole video and I went through this complete um, online tutorial which walks me through the video basically and explains to me what is a computer. It's got steps. This is just stuff I found online. I mean, I, don't, I didn't write this curriculum up. I just found resources already built, already out there read through it, take notes, so I get an understanding for myself what it is. And then the instructions say, then in your own words, give an example of hardware and software. So <clears throat> on the next tab of the lesson, the this is Google Classroom. It automatically, I submitted, as the teacher, I put a template on this lesson, and it automatically creates a document for the student. So I'll have a copy of each student's document on my end as a teacher to grade. So here's the template. Now the student can just fill in the blanks. Oops, oops, oops. Um. These can also be used, because I had to do this for school just recently. I had to do many of these. You can also use this sort of same template to videotape like a classroom and your your instruction for a student that is away or a student that is sick. So I've had to do it, videotape myself, giving, and then the lesson is there. You can give them, you know, if they're preparing for a test, you can do a video and then they can keep going back. Every student learns differently and at a different pace. Some need it repeated 15 times. So they can, they can keep hitting, rewind, repeat, rewind. They can keep doing that it's tough to do and answering it absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I've had to do many of these and set them up for one of the classes that I took recently. It, wonderful tool, wonderful tool to be able to use. So, so I, and the key, the long-term key is over time, your, your toolbox gets filled with different pieces some that are good, some that are bad. You've mm -hmm. paired out the ones that are bad. But if you're in that cohort team, those become available to that entire team, depending on how you do your structure with regards right. to your assignments. And to make it group kids. We, we've already been talking about how maybe how Infinite Campus should be structured in terms of uh, course structure for next year to facilitate this kind of work. Finally, it looks like we're coming into the 21st century here. And this so question, question, schools question, are always so far behind. Yeah. 
Because um, then the question is, do you want to do this? Yeah. So then the student can turn it in. Put a little button up here. It's turn in. It's submitted to the teacher. And a quick connection to make this sort of like how this this is my question for the flipped classroom piece is this connects really nicely to the proficiency based learning piece because with this if there's going to be a lecture the teacher needs to explain have something explained to students if you can flip it this way so students can watch it beforehand that becomes homework um, and then they can watch it multiple times because some students can process information coming from another person once but some students need multiple iterations which they don't get if it's in the classroom so if a lot of that can be front loaded via the technology then the classroom can be much more focused on small group the teacher there to actually help kids do work because it can be a lot more right. group based work which then allows the teacher to differentiate and meet and help the kids if they are struggling more so because if I'm talking I can't differentiate so if a lot of that can be front loaded with technology again it just increases the capacity you what you're saying right now so I just went through that whole lesson I did my homework at, at home and I handed it in digitally so there was no paper used now I'm at school and my teacher is in front of the classroom instead of lecturing me this um, is really good. or reading any I'm not going to do <laughs> I'm going to actually do an interaction one I'm not going to uh, do the one where I don't even spell the words right at the end <laughs> but um, now the teacher is in class with the group of kids and I'm, I'm going to say okay class can you explain to me which one of these is hardware and which one of these is software and then I can so class which one's this and the class can tell me, oh, that's hardware. And I can work with the class, and, you know, and I, I'm not connected to anything. I walk around the class, and I can, um, you know, communicate one-on-one -on -one with the student who's having trouble, who might be working on a piece of paper or, or writing that's based on something I'm presenting to them right here. Now, the answer to the other thing was if you have the advice in front of in the proposal, you'll see it's a air parrot and a couple other things. You can say, parrot. Let's see what you got. And then up you go. I can flip open one of these devices and connect. Now what I would ideally like to see happen is for the particularly the people that focus on writing, is they actually have two two cameras, two <coughs> projectors in the room. So the teacher can have their sample and kids can be popping up different ones and compare and contrast. And part of that budget is that is there how much additional training do staff need for blended learning or, or flipped? It'll take time. Practices. That's a big one. That's the probably the biggest training. That's not just that's that's the big. Okay. Which that's not part of the the, the budget. Budget, no. That's part of the PD budget. Yeah, the okay. PD. Meaning that was pre-early release days being put in every Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was, if you look in the budget, there was a substantial piece on PD related to that. But you'll see as you, uh, there's more and more of this. How do I do this? You Google yeah. it. It yeah. shows you how to do a structure and so forth. Um, I just want to make sure that we have the capacity to you make use of best do use go, of. Do we go like with a Google Classroom? as the tool or we use some other tool. Um, At the moment I think it's kind of a mix. The other question is the two proposals, the one proposal, the more expensive proposal though, keeps it consistent by cohort. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that would be my preference. I can see confusions being, I, well I, and I could be wrong, so correct, but I'm wondering if, if for example if you've got the six, seven, and eight cohort and kids are getting mixed around and I've got a handful of kids who have Apple and a handful of kids who have Chromebooks. They're doing everything in the cloud. Potentially. Potentially, but I could see if I've got some things on the app, not MacBooks that I don't have on the cloud. That's what I'm saying, is you standardize into the cloud. Uh, it the comes down to the teacher's lesson has to be. No, it, 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 it really doesn't. That, no. That's not, I, I've taught both ways. That, that's not. I know you can, but I think the kids will have, the apples will still be able to do more than the Chromebooks just by the nature of the, the machine. They will not, what, what the kids use them for you can do it all. I've gone around and then when I walked through rooms recently, right. uh, six weeks ago, I went around and saw what every kid was doing in Mr. Putnam's class and, and uh, Guy's class, just to look. And it's their word processing. No, I agree. I, I, all can be done in the cloud. It doesn't need that kind of horsepower. I agree. But that does have more horsepower. Right. But, but, but what do the, do the, are the kids using the horsepower? The answer is they aren't. Well, but, but that's but I, I, that's a separate issue. But I think if we had the six, seven, and eight, the six, if the the, the, the sixth grade students they have Chromebooks, and then the, you've got the MacBooks. If I've got a combination, I'm limited to the the functionality of the Chromebooks because well, I, it, it's it, 
will require a little bit more maneuvering in gymnastics because the, the Chromebooks can't do what the Apples do. But if, the, if there's consistency in devices across the cohort, it just for navigation and, and, and planning, I could do more. I agree with you though, they, everything the Apples do, they can do anything the Chromebooks can do, but the Chromebooks can't do everything the Apples can do. I would agree with that, but, but then I would ask, what is it you're doing for learning? Well, that's, that's a and the question is, I can tell you, I've done the research, yeah. they're not using the device for what it can do. Well, I'd want it to and be, but I'd want to maximize they, the use for the Apples. <laughs> what? Uh, high school, they're going to get an iPad. High school, school they're going to get an iPad. Yeah, iPads and what I predict will happen is, you as a parent, when your child gets there, you're going to buy them a Chromebook and say, hey, use that. Because you're not going to buy a $1,000. No, not me. Business. You're going to give them a $200. I bought device. my daughter one for, her, for so. college. College? Different, <laughs> different story. Oh, that. Different That's story. That's a different story. That's <laughs> story. That's story. That's First of all, they may be a little more responsible. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I see what you're saying. It's, 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 it, the, the reality on the ground is one thing. But if I do, if, if we were going to have a cohort that's mixing 6th, 7th, and 8th grades around in different ways, I wouldn't want I, I, what, what computer saying, kid has to influence those grouping decisions just because of ease. Well, with, the, to, to kind of piggyback off of it, though, it, the kids have to be <coughs> instructed on how to use the technology. So that ties back into the teacher training piece. Mm -hmm. This is going to take time. It's not going to happen all in one year. It's gonna. It's mm -hmm. going to take time for it to evolve. So. Mm -hmm. They need to be explicitly taught, like what the Apple Cloud is and how you can use it. And it's a lot of it, they don't know that. So mm -hmm. they're they're able to do that way more than you think because I've done it with them too in middle school. And I've watched kids. I was telling you, I, uh, I went and observed schools that were doing it down third, fourth, or fifth grade. No problem. Well, they've been explicitly that's instructed. It, it that's take, that's the long, key. The that right. explicit ex instruction because without that, it's they have a fancy toy that they can play with, you know, so. I mean, this is very fancy. And I'm less worried about, in, in regards to this, would we need um, supports for parents? So in regards to, um, would parents need some supports on how to um, use some of these resources so they can help their stu their mm -hmm. children better? I'm, more, I'm, I'm not concerned about the kids navigating, but um, setting the parents up for su success to help their kids be able to manipulate the devices. What, 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 if what that's I necessary. Found in cases is what happens? Who do you think trains the parents? The, the kids. kids. That's it. That's right. So is the question for us whether so, we support this? So yeah, because this is this this one's a was a big ticket item, and we may or may not be able to do it all based on. Those other priorities first. Okay, so w do we have price tags on the other priorities? Because we have different we had, levels. We had the question is, do you want to zero there. this or not? Through those lists, pre-K, da 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 da. Zero it? I don't understand. Well, because otherwise what, it just goes to end design. What? Which is fine what too, he's asking is, do we want to take all this leftover money and spend it and spend it all? Or do we want to let it? I mean, that do we want to let it revert into the undesignated fund, or do we want? I mean, there are different different things we could do with it. We could also return some more of that to the yep. taxpayers. That's another <coughs> option we have. What I wanted to know was, I like the technology piece, um, but I don't know what the cost of the other items. Tell me again what the other priorities were. One of pre-K startup. Pre startup, and what's Cur curriculum and classroom? Yeah, but what's the money what's, amount? What's the dollar amount on that? We're still working on. That's what I'm saying. Well, can you give me a ballpark? The, the playground was about playground eighteen. Was fifteen. What was fifteen? Fifteen. Playground. Playground. Pre-K. No, that's just the equipment. That's just the equipment. Was it and Andrew's then we still stuff. have the fencing and, and Andy's side of it, which we haven't got all the numbers for that one yet. And then, um, well, those are in most of it, huh? So we're looking at more like 20. The, the real thing is we have to know what to do by July 1, by June 30th. Right. Right. If we were to be, be part of this tonight. thing he said, we need to know it by June 1. But that only came on the ticket this week, right? I'm sure we can finagle that. Now. So we really have till June 30th to determine 
<coughs> how you want to address that funds. So for June 9th, because we're meeting again June 9th, can we have... Well, you'll, like get, we're, you'll get numbers closer in those other areas. So if we could have everything on one page in regards to... But it sounds like, the, just as an aside, for me, the pre-K is a no-brainer. I mean, we can't... We, we have to do that. We, we, yeah. We're committed that's to just, the pre This is where it was going to come from. Yeah. But, and that's a... Everything we've invested, if we don't do the, the playgrounds and stuff, we can't do pre-K. So, I mean, yeah. for, that's a required expense. Pre-K is a very okay, so important. Pre-K is a definite yes. Yeah. So one sheet um, on all those pieces. But yes, please. Right, that's what I'm hearing, just, just so we, we can. At, the, at that point. Because then we can prioritize. Okay, so we have pre-K, okay? Then we have the technology piece. We have the network. We have the literacy, Lucy Coffin. The network. Which we know is about seven. We know that one kind of fast. The, the Calkins is no that one. Um, I have that one. That's going to be more than seven thousand. No, Lucine I have, I cheap. Have it just to I wasn't thinking we were going to get to that this this part of the discussion tonight. Um, but basically, what I'm hearing the committee is we want to look at all of them to be able to make yep. a decision, right? Yeah, because. No, but we. I mean, we these are all things that pre-K, so we have to go through with that. These are these are all things that. I'm talking about just because we have these. These are all things that are on the what 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 you would call, you know, when I used to go to camp, I had my list of everything I had to take, and then I had a list of things that said, not necessary but nice to have. Optional. Yeah. And I see the I see the pre-K piece as being necessary. Necessary. This is how it was. And I see the other things on the other list. And <coughs> I think we need to really look at each of them. We need to look at each of them and we also need to look at what what we're doing with this extra money that's left over. Um Lucy Cox is about six thousand. That's it. not counting the PD. Not counting the PD. The oh, PD. Yeah, PD and the other in our budget. Yeah. Now oh, can okay, I, so that come out elsewhere. Can I ask you, does that include the new kits in reading and writing that are coming out this summer? That's 6000 because there's going to be new materials coming out this summer. I can only repeat what she did. She okay. said, uh, what Rachel did here, and she said that should cover it. Um. They said uh, it also would provide the promise of canal phonics and spelling materials for K-6. The first quote. So, what so is it your question? My, my particular question is, is with Lucy Calkins, there's reading and writing kits for the workshop model. That's an instructional approach that you can take. Yeah. And that Lucy is going through and revising. To fit the workshop model? She's going through and revising her kits, or her lessons, based on <coughs> what's been happening in other schools all around the country. And from what I hear, it's a little bit more expensive, so I just would want an updated price right, on that. Right, you're saying she's making them fit the workshop model? Well, it is the workshop so, model. It is the workshop so model. Rachel, is the she's just revising her materials. Yeah, yeah. Right, I think, this, you know, yeah. like the one-to-one -one yeah. technology, we can budget for next year. And do it through the normal budget process. Yep. The network <coughs> also. I mean, why does that have to be done? Tell now? me about the network, Michael. Mm -hmm. The seven thousand dollars for the network. I'm waiting for uh, our approval from uh, the FCC on the E-rate funding. So it's either we're going to get E-rate funding, or we're going to spend seven thousand dollars, and it's going to increase bandwidth across the school. Um, so that's a. That's our share of a much bigger cost. Yep. I've submitted E-rate requests for nearly $30,000, and we're going to get 80% of that covered by the E-rate. So um, we either use it or lose it. And I think next year it's going to be 75%. The year after it's going to be so. And you've been doing this for multiple years, though. This is our first year. This is the first and only. This is the first year it has been offered. Or given us the opportunity. So that's kind of a. But I think if we have it all on paper next too. time, then we can sort of kind of bank through and be like, this is this is necessary. This is necessary. Yeah, yeah well, pretty what much. What do you guys? What do you? No, guys I'd rather give can. the money back to the town personally. I don't want to spend one hundred and seventy thousand dollars because we're trying, just trying to be transparent we and we that's have our buckets, order. and that's then that's we order. we you know we yes. budget through the budget process. We gain what we want. Right, but you. Bu what I'm saying is, in your fourteen fifteen budget, you budgeted. 
that's what you have left over as we anticipate if things go as right the, but that doesn't mean we spend it nope, just because we have money left it over. doesn't right but I, I i'd like to look at everything to sort of see if something's necessary like <laughs> yeah, the, the, the necessary. playground then we say yeah so i can see us saying we need to spend this but this out of the 170 there's this amount that's left over and goes back to the town i'd want to look at it by item by item Perhaps yes. the other question is yep. how successful will the other school boards in the county be in banding together with the common market against the vendor in terms of getting reductions in price? And apparently, I'm not going to speak for the gentleman who's just standing right there behind me, but everyone's quite eager uh, to uh, affect this kind of, of, a, of a unification as far as requests are concerned, how much savings there'll be. I guess it's somewhat uh, questionable, but the fact is that there will be savings if everybody, all the school boards in, in the county um, go along with this push and ask for uh, reductions in price because of the larger market. And, and how, would, how would you view this as far as transparency to the community at large? Now um, you, you saw the vote for the school board. It was 155 or 98. To 55. I'm not sure in terms of <laughs> whether that's really representative of voters or not. Uh, certainly, a lot of people didn't come out to vote, yeah. and the vote was in favor, not to the degree that I was hoping for or thought would probably occur. There were a lot of people whom I talked with who said, you know, they want too much money. And then when you bring out the fact that uh, you know, the actual increase in the budget proposal is very, very small in comparison with the general inflation right now in the country, they were quiet and they understood it. But um, uh, I was a little disappointed that there were as many people who voted against it who actually did vote against it. I think more people would have voted against it had they seen how things were slid in there without being really explained on yeah. what exactly it was yeah. for. Right. What do you mean slid? Was slid uh, such there, as? There was nothing slid in this year's way. Well, the it kind of was. The 15, all 16. the undesignated, you know, all those. People got confused with those designated. Yeah. People could have come to the town meeting and okay. listened to it. And they were trying yeah. to figure out. You know, are you just robbing Peter to pay Paul? Are you taking it out of one designated oh, no, uh, fund in order to establish this new fund? And uh, it was overwhelming for most voters who really tried to look at it deeply. They were very confused. But the, the bottom line is that the vote, the referendum vote, had nothing to do with those buckets. Mm -hmm. No, but it, since then, people have been doing a lot of talking about it and wondering why those buckets were created and where did they come from and why were they there in the first place. That's well, just and I know, think that was pretty say. Yeah, I think that was pretty well explained in our budget meetings as far as the as the buckets go and I think you know it was explained, it was explained well except it, that most voters who come in and have the didn't have the benefit of that conversation. <laughs> no materials, with the materials presented for the here. vote didn't explain what what you guys had planned for those buckets. It, it wasn't clear because when you listen now you can understand that you had some ideas about moving and creating these buckets but it, it in the papers that were presented for the actual vote it was not clear at all so it wasn't explained uh, you're talking no. about that you're talking yeah. about at town meeting at the town meeting right yeah right. I mean we were there a half hour <coughs> early and we didn't get mm -hmm. the actual budget right. book until the minute before things started going and you're flipping through it you don't have time to comprehend what's actually going on and what to ask for questions had i known i would have asked like where the instructional mm -hmm. coach was in the budget because it's, I, I still can't find it i still have no idea where that and the actual vote was very simplistic. Are you in favor of it? Yes or no? Uh, That's state law. Yeah. I know, yeah. but I'm, yeah. I'm just saying it was. Uh, mm. it, it covered a multitude of what some do people you, thought were sins. Do you think it would be? Because uh, if this is, from what I'm hearing, is that there's been an increase in questions and concerns about the, the why we have these buckets after the fact after now with the, the budget. Fact. So I wonder if it might behoove us to sort of issue uh, a communication, maybe on the website, in regards to explaining, you know, after the fact, you know, there's been a lot of questions about um, the, the, the these these accounts because, in all honesty, this I think it's sort of like a 
counterintuitive, this has increased transparency. Because it has increased transparency, right. now people are more aware of things that wasn't immediately transparent in the past. So we have definitely moved into a much more transparent um, operating system. But because of that, because of people that don't understand that shift, it seems like almost as if there's less transparency. So I think if we can maybe issue something that kind of explains why, um, that might help. And to advertise the amounts of monies money, that yeah. are yeah. being sent I'm, back I'm to the town even No, no, I think there's confusion. There is. And it, it was explained well during, I think, the budget meetings. We had many conversations, but if somebody wasn't there, so then okay. they're going to look at this like, no, what the heck are they doing? Yeah, they all had so. the same opportunity to come. No, the same I, people I, I, show I'm up to the meetings. Not the time to do it, though. And I mean, you well, can I watch them on YouTube. They're there, but it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of a lot of dedicated time for people to watch all this and try to piecemeal it together mm. and actually understand it. Because I mean, I've had questions about stuff and <coughs> when you actually are here hearing it and you can say something you say, it's oh. clarified a little bit better versus yeah. just listening to somebody else that already knows what they're talking about right. but there are only these, about 40 these, people these buckets, at the town meeting these well, buckets are, are really much perfect. more responsible budgeting Absolutely. by the school committee yeah. than we've ever had before because now we don't have to put in money in just this, in case. just in case money, so we can budget much more effectively for actually what, we, what we're what we doing. This, yes, this here is a, This is the bulk of this is just in case money, mm -hmm. and it was on every year. Yes. Right. And I'm saying, what I'm suggesting that you consider is you do one of the other. You can give that back now because we're closer to it. We're almost done the school year. We know where we're standing. We can return it. Just like we gave a word that we returned the 110,000 that the budget passed, which it did, and we've already returned it. Yeah. We did that. The percent increase of the budget because of that return is 0 0.54. 0 0.56. 56. And we still were able to do a pre-K, and we're still able to do an instructional coach and all those things. So I think we're trying to say we're being very transparent up front. But I agree. Probably and David people just seemed, yeah, you know, that way. David. Yeah, yeah, being at a lot of the, the meetings, all of the budget meetings for that matter, you know, we, if you look back, we all discussed this, that this, we knew this was probably going to happen because it takes a, mo with something like this, I mean, I understand it, you understand it, we've been involved in all of it. It took all that involvement to completely work, work it through and see the idea and so forth. Um, and we, we said it, you heard the finance committee say it, we said it, you said it, that boy, it's going to take communication, a lot of communication for people to digest that. And let's, and you know how this all goes. I mean, you guys have all been involved in, in, in the, this whole legislative uh, process a lot. Many times, you know, you don't see or hear what's going on until significantly after the fact because when they don't know, more questions come up, just like it, they have here tonight. And then the you know you have to keep going with the process. I think sometimes the mistake we may we make is we think, and I'm not saying I think you guys are not doing that. But what I'm saying is we oh the budget's over, this is done. It's Communication done. It's doesn't finite. have to end. That's right. That's right. And it, this is really a continual. Pro it's a continual process. It really is because we've seen in the past where if you if you did stop the communication, communication did become finite. Eventually, you see what builds, and a wave of builds, and that wave turns into a lot of negative voting for things that you really want and need beyond, you know, the, just the nuts and bolts of what you need to function. So I, we've I, seen it. Reaction. The reaction is always worse. You know, we are always going to be talking about where well, there are only 40 people there. There are only 30 people here. You know what I mean? And it, it's just the way it's going to be until people get PO'd over lack of communication or this or that, and <laughs> then they react. And if there's a misunderstanding, I think, with the bu the bucket, the, the reserve accounts now, that could linger over until next year. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. And right. a 98 to 55, that's a, that's, that's a little close for my comfort. Yeah, so I think it and mine too, exactly. And if people are going to vote against the budget because they don't approve the budget, that's one thing. But I would hate the people to not vote against the bu to vote against the budget because they just misunderstand. Yeah. Right. And I think if and we can happens. issue, well, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. So, um, but it sounds like maybe if we can issue communication, it goes on the website, sort of explaining this. That might. The yes. school board should be very proud if the if the budget increase is truly only one percent. Point five six. Less, less than. Point five six. Zero point five six percent increase in the budget. 
and we have given X number of dollars back to the town already. That's what comes. How much? People don't know that. People don't know that. Setting something out, I think, after letting people know. I mean, you should be at the top of the hill blowing the bugle because I think <laughs> you've done a fantastic job. You've made positive changes and you've done so without increasing the, the general budget and you've given money back. Is it June 9th, the town vote? Yeah. Uh, the ninth. June ninth. I had to go back. I town can't remember. Uh, June the vote is the eighth, eighth or ninth. I thought the ninth. The ninth right. is the vote, and the town meeting we is meet the following. Tonight. Yeah, that's the same day that people go to the polls to mm -hmm. vote, though, for local mm -hmm. elections. I'm just saying maybe this way to put something together before that, because that hundred and ten is in that that town budget vote. Right. Well, they should. Be, they'll be explaining that at the town How's meeting. How is that worded? How is it worded? Yeah, they're going to see an article that says um, to allow know. that the town will approve the transfer of one hundred ten thousand from the school's undesignated fund to um, offset or whatever to offset taxes, and basically what you'll see is. They'll have one article that's on res on revenues, and they'll see yeah. 110 from undesignated school balance. But that's still not going to be understood. It's not going to be transparent. That's why I'm saying there's got to be a way to to. Yeah. Um, be able to advertise. Well, when they go to town meeting, they're going to sit there and they're going to hear that. But they're gonna gonna it's only if they go to the town meeting. That's right. right. And I mean, only, I that's think I mean, people it's the same voters as the PTG town meetings. Meeting. Mm -hmm. Nobody oh, knows. I mean, the, I mean the town and town meeting oh. in June. <laughs> it's like there'll the be a town reaction town. if the Michael. townspeople here $170,000 spent. I mean, that was, I mean, the 170000 is going to be used that was not spent. You, there's that there's that end of things as well I mean there's a reaction to that as well certainly well, it's how this works that's why I think so if we have them all listed we talked about I mean Michael, did, did that something you wanted to add um, I just wanted to give it an idea um, we I demonstrated the um, pro, pro, proficiency based learning model where the student can go at its own pace and and, and watch a video and absorb the information at their own pace. We could do something similar with the yes. board and these ideas um, and, and, and the describing of what you just said. Okay. I don't want to put you on the spot. No, see, my, <laughs> job, my job is to advocate for an educational system that but provides the best opportunity within the financial mm -hmm. constraints of the town. We could set you up. That's all I'm trying to do. To I really have no dog in the fight. No, no we <laughs> can set you up with a YouTube channel, sir, where you can. Um, <laughs> You can you can you can verbally explain all of this information or the board as well, um, you know, the, the the article and explain how the article works or the buckets and explain how so then the people can go and watch these videos their own pace. and on their I own pace it. understand it. Will they that's though? An idea. That's, that's the that's the thing. Though. I think they're more likely to click on a video than yes, read. Yes, everybody. Uh, no, they would, be, they would be more likely to click on a video and listen to the video and rewind the video. But well, then you'll have 30 people sweet. versus yeah. you know 3,000 people. It's, it's still the the numbers game is who's gonna who's gonna watch. Who's gonna the absentee you, ballots already went up last Wednesday. Yeah. So. I mean, if you actually had those videos, uh, like the video was explain the designated funds or explain the reserves and, and then maybe have another video that I explains could, the budget total. We, we could potentially the scrub the uh, school board videos and the budget meetings and, and pull those key pieces and then. And, and That's probably them. more work though than just sitting down and explaining it. We can make a We don't need to give you more work, Michael. Well, the real issue is the credibility issue. Our superintendent. Who would have the credibility? No, the you punch. have to come up with a YouTube video. So you <laughs> do it. Yeah, that's why I said sorry. <laughs> MC Hammer. Um, but it, but it, it's. Well, uh, I think that this is. We've got on the. I think there's agreement that we need to d continue to do communication because from what we're hearing from the public that there's still a lot of confusion, and that the intent was to be more transparent. And if people are thinking it's less transparent, that's a problem, and I would hate to see that manifest in. A poor turnout, or you know, in right. er errant numbers next year in the budget. So, I think we need to do something, um, and and have that. Maybe that's something that stays you know, on the the school board section, well, or yeah, we, we, we publicize. When you say transparency, it's interesting because 
this has happened every year for at least the last five years, and you guys never knew it. No, that's we, what, we knew there was money left over. Well, that I can tell you. That's what grows your end, But it's it? gone into the end, doesn't it? And it just... Yeah, it's gone kind of into just, the end. We weren't it, having the level of conversation we're having now. It isn't right. something that we've just said, okay, oh, <coughs> we've got this much money left over. But why, Let's spend it all. Why, why didn't it... But why that, again, I know. I asked the question, why didn't they go back to the vote then? Right, it should have gone back at that time. Then. But we can sit here and play in the past forever, and right. it's not going to get us anything. No, well, we have a, we <laughs> haven't. Well, what one one thing that's new is now we have an undesignated fund policy, policy right. which we've never had before in the mm -hmm. past, and we have the we had the contingency funds; they've been established. Um, and now I think we, we need have a tighter budget. We'll we'll definitely be budgeting much closer to what we're actually going to spend mm -hmm. from now on because we have the contingency funds <coughs> because of our uh, policy. And I think we really need to figure out the best way to <coughs> communicate to the, to the public, to the parents, to the voters, to the taxpayers that our intent really is in their best interest to give them back as much as we can if we have some left over um, and to be totally transparent with what we're doing. I think we've been transparent, but apparently we haven't been clear in the way we've explained it. We haven't made it clear enough to the to the community. So if well, we can figure out a good way to do that, then, I mean, I thought we were being transparent in the budget meetings. I thought we were explaining it very well. I think the 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 buckets got explained pretty well why we were having them and how it was going to be more responsible for us in budgeting in the years to come and it was money that was already there I, I think you know I think we were pretty transparent in those budget meetings but I know people that didn't see the budget meetings that weren't there so now we have to more make sure that, that more people understand people that weren't at the budget meetings people that don't understand what they are need to need we, had, we need to figure out how to do that. It's PR. No, I like the YouTube video idea. Me too. I well, think that's great. But you can Again, have fun, you but know, I, and explain. This I, I, I'm, Very I short. It, but the question is, again, do we reach the people that are bringing up those questions? That's the part I want to know. I think it's right on the website. So, I think pe yeah. people click on video. Well, what I'm no, thinking, too. There's something else in the, in the Smart Shopper as well. I, mean, I we was can, thinking the Smart Shopper. We can do this to everybody's mailbox. We can do something paper. else in the Smart Shopper. I think we put a leaflet in the post office. A lot of people sit there and look at all those little things <laughs> that they're opening up. All those, all those booklets, uh, the budget and everything, went everywhere that you could possibly leave them in town. I mean, I don't know what else. People could have picked them up in five places. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's I mean, not what I, the, what, what I put in the smart shopper, we put on flyers and had them in the post offices and the at the trading post. Mm -hmm. and different places around town to make that information, to try to get that information out there. And even if the, those, the smart shoppers in the post office box, I can't tell you how many are in the rubbish. Not everybody picks them up. I'm telling you that That's the right. rubbish is full of shop in, in like two different places, two different styles. So you're going to hit you know, you'll hit the people that will look at the smart shopper. You'll hit the people that will we, look at Well, we a, thought a we video. did. I mean, we did. And then, you know, people are going to talk, and so it, it might get the word out a little bit better if it's in so, different formats. But, you know, you have to look at also the number of students that are in school. Not even, even if a relative of one of them showed up to vote. That didn't even happen. I know. That didn't, not a... Mm -hmm. Not even a third cousin, you but know what I mean, didn't even show up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's got a relative. They didn't but go to vote. They're not the ones that are voting. But bottom line is 90-something to 50-something is worrisome. Not, that's not good. And right, right there, those data suggest mm -hmm. a lack of communication. So I think we need two things moving forward. One is kind of like what you just mentioned, Julie, sort of like those key pieces of information. In, in a sense, we want to tell the story of the buckets. 
I mean, for me, the, my understanding of the story is last year there were some serious questions raised about the transparency of the undesignated funds. Mm -hmm. So as a school committee with Bob this year, we had said that was one thing we wanted to talk about, greater transparency, and the idea of the, the, the reserve accounts was, 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 was put forth as a, a approach to creating increasing that transparency. So there's a story here. I don't think people know the story. So I think the two things we need is, one, someone to put together in writing that story. Then I think it, then it's a matter of what sort of the communications plan in regards to if, if that document gets put, published on the web, goes in the smart shopper, becomes a leaflet, and then a quick video is made. Because people, if, if, they, if we have the video on the website, people might click it and, and attach it to what's up in Acton or to this, and people will do links. And at least we're doing our due diligence to offset, I think, the erroneous communication. <coughs> but I think that, that that's the, we, what is that story? We need somebody to put that down. I'll and, try to work on that. Mm -hmm. oh. And maybe we look at it on June 9th and sort of and then figure out sort of what we do with that. It'll be called the story of the buckets. <coughs> the buckets the bucket story. The bucket list. Well, to no. kind of piggyback off the story of the buckets, let's involve no, seriously, let's involve some of the older students to get them experience with making a video and reading they could they could help. We could make this yeah, like a learning I, I see project. It as student led. We can we could somehow turn this into a student learning project. I'm convinced of it somehow. The town votes on the ninth. Ninth, yeah. They vote on the ninth. That, right. Yeah. The but ninth. that's where that piece mm -hmm. is. No. Is no. 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 That's it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's where that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and I'm saying that's, right. that's the idea. No. That, that will be the following Saturday. Town. That will come up at the town meeting. No, it'll right. be at the town meeting. It'll be right. at the town meeting. Not at the vote. Not at the vote. Won't be at the polls on the ninth. It'll be the following Saturday. Right. At the town meeting. So if we return with Saturday. some after, and then again, That's then right. again, it depends on what controversies we get the results. What's the controversial meeting. enough in the town to get people to go to town meeting on that Saturday, as to how many people in town actually know that the school gave back one hundred and ten thousand dollars. How many you know? people typically go to that town meeting? It more than depends. depends on the weather. Depends it used to be a lot more. It's rainy, you'll get more. If it's sunny, they're no, all out no. on the lake. Yeah, it used to be when the school budget was on at the town at the <coughs> town meeting, there was probably 130. Uh, at least 100. Yeah, yeah but at even least 100. but but even after they were separated, it, okay. the attendance at town meeting depends on what's going controversy, on. Yeah, right. personal interest, people have a bone about something. Whether it's a road or a building or a whatever, politicized issues drive. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the, the town budget is going up compared to last year, mm -hmm. and they've eliminated the interior wetlands, or they want to eliminate the interior wetlands, not the shoreline ones, and the buffer zones around them, and that's a big controversy. I know. So there may be the, more people there. Maybe only those that I are know involved. That the Warren and, and, and uh, in finance the committee uh, voted to vote against all of those about the wetlands. So that should be interesting to see what happens. But that will only involve the people that yeah. are near wetlands. No, they, uh, to, uh, to eliminate them officially and the buffers so people can build on them. Yeah, okay. Just okay. the interior ones. We need to keep this thing moving along yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're going to make a list about what it is. I'm going to, yeah. When is, um, and we're gonna for our for our next meeting. Maybe if if you get that list, oh, if you could, on. yeah. I mean, if you could email it to us ahead of time so that we'll have an idea. It'll be part of the and then we can then we can make a better informed decision about what, what we, we actually want. What to, we spend and what we don't. I would like to say that we did have money left over, and at times we do look at say when the price of fuel was almost four dollars a gallon. We said we, we locked in at a good price. Let's fill the tank. So, you know, so, so we have used yeah, we've that done things money like that. to try to save the town future. Well, again, as I said, I, this started way back in basically December when the pre-K bill thing, and how how could we possibly pay for it? And I anticipated because we, I know we weren't going to. I didn't think we'd have all those tuition. And as the year went on, we didn't have the tuition. We didn't have tuition, so that hundred and ten was we've had a few, but I mean. We ended up having about that tuition is a lot. That's that line, yeah. right? And so, really, this is your one year which you should have this. I don't but anticipate you'll have that kind of money to see again. that 
what we budgeted and then did kids drop out like I'd like to know if there's a we can probably get high school it. dropout problem when you see that also or well, did people the move, other thing you know the, what I mean when the for when the uh, account because it's the money the, that was left the over comes out with the final uh, you know audit the, the audit comes out for like homeschoolers decide to go to Sanford and we have to come up with ten thousand or eleven thousand dollars for it we had so we had a contingency had a in there. That's yes. correct. But that's yeah, what grew. We won't have it anymore. Every year. Right. We won't have right. it anymore. Because if you, I think they had one year where they, they didn't have enough money for tuition, and, and in November they were freezing everybody's oh, money. Oh yeah. Right. We were short one hundred and fifty dollars. One hundred fifty thousand one year. Yeah. And the reason for that was, the reason for that was that um, we didn't know about the increase that happens in November. When the when the state comes out with what the tuition Which rate is going to be the next next mm -hmm. year, we didn't know that because <coughs> we were kind of like juggling yes, superintendents sir. in between, yeah. and we didn't we didn't have as a board we didn't have that uh, have that knowledge. So we thought we had budgeted fine for our tuition. Then we found out that it went up uh, in December. So we we got this big bill and we didn't have the money to pay for it. However. Our new contract with Sanford is that now, whatever the rate is right now, it will be that through the next school year. So we don't have one to year later. we right. don't have to worry about that it, anymore. It's always one year behind. Yes, yeah. predictable. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's like the walking in the field for two years. Okay, we're we ready to uh, adjourn this meeting. No, we have we have to go into executive yeah. session. Yeah, right. no, but we have to adjourn this meeting. Right? Yeah, we have to adjourn this meeting and go into executive. Don't session. I just make a motion to go into? Oh, executive to go into session? I'll make a make a motion to go. Into I'll make a motion to go into executive session at eight forty-seven. Anybody second? Eight forty-seven. Seconded. Thank you for that feedback too. That was helpful. Yep. You want to go yes. into executive session? We yeah.